Section 1 Noach and the Ark The Zohar reveals secrets within the literal story of Noah and the Ark Noah embodies the Sfirat of Yezid The Ark is a metaphor for our world of Malchut The sins of this generation literally separated the Malchut from Yezid which was its source of light This is the mystery behind the flood's destruction Any disconnection from light produces darkness and from within this darkness chaos and destruction emerge Reading this section helps bond Malchut with Yezid It is comparable to the simple action of throwing a light switch and banishing the darkness in a room Moreover by reading these passages we arouse spiritual forces of light to combat and eradicate the present day negative actions of society that once again are beginning to sever the link between the Malchut and Yezid 1 These are the generations of Noach Beersheet 69 Rabbi Shee opened the discussion with the verses Noach was a righteous man and your people also shall be all righteous. They shall inherit the land forever. Yeshua 6021 IT was difficult for him to understand the connection between the two parts of the first verse because after the statement these are the generations of Noach the text should have continued Shem Sham and Yevit IT should not have ended with Noach was a righteous man he further stated happy are the people of Israel who occupy themselves with the Torah and are familiar with its paths through which they will merit the world to come to. Rabbi Shia continued come and behold all Israel have a portion in the world to come why is this so because they observe the covenant on which the world is established this is as it is written in the verse if my covenant be not day and night it were as if I had not appointed the ordinance of heaven and earth here may 3325 meaning that Israel keep in holiness of the covenant of circumcision by never desecrating it with spilling of semen in vain or by incest therefore Israel who has accepted the covenant and observes it has a portion in the world to come three furthermore as a result they are called righteous we deduce from this that whoever observes the covenant upon which the world is established is called righteous how do we know this we know this from Yosef who observed the covenant of the world by not mating with his master's wife and was therefore called righteous and this is why it is written your people also shall be all righteous they shall inherit the land forever Rabbi Shia thus explained the verse Noach was a righteous man as meaning that Noach observed the covenant for this reason his offspring have continuity the verse thus states these are the generations of Noach Noach was a righteous man because his righteousness and the continuity of his children are connected for Rabbi Lazar said that we have learned that whenever the term these heavily appears it always annuls something previously mentioned now it is written in Beersheet. A river comes out of Eden to water the garden and from thence it was parted Bereshit 210 this means that this river which is Yezid is drawn and comes out of Eden which is Chokmah and enters the garden which is Malchut to water it from the supernal waters and bring it pleasure making it produce fruit and seed this gives delight to everyone the garden is pleased with its fruit which brings pleasure to the river because it made the fruit as it is written because in it he has rested a bit three. Meaning in the river which is Yezid and it is also written and he rested on the seventh day meaning in the garden which is Malchut as Rabbi Lazar explained the word rested is derived from rest and pleasure this is the secret of the matter of the river that comes out of Eden meaning Yezid for it produces offspring and no other sphere can produce any fruit five come and behold so it was with Noach below Noach was the sacred covenant below as Yezid or the river that comes out of Eden was above and he is called man of the earth because the earth refers to Malchut and Yezid is Malchut's man so now we have learned the secret that Noach needed the ark which alludes to Malchut so he could unite with it and preserve the seed of the whole world as it is written to preserve seed 6 Rabbi Lazar asked what is the ark and he answered it is the ark which is Malchut of the covenant after it receives Yezid which is called the covenant and Noach and the ark below were like Yezid and Malchut above because the covenant is mentioned in relation to Noach as it is written and I will establish my covenant with you as long as the covenant was not established in Noach he did not enter the ark as it is written and I will establish my covenant with you and you shall come onto the ark only then does the ark become the ark of the covenant meaning that after the ark received and accepted Noach the righteous who is the covenant it became the ark of the covenant 7 so the ark and Noach are joined below as are Malchut and the covenant above and because the covenant above brings forth offspring so Noach below bore generations that is why it is written these are the generations of Noach this is to teach us that like the covenant above which is Yezid of Atzalah Noach bore everlasting generations because he merited the holy covenant Yezid of Atzalah which is called the covenant rest upon him eight Noach was a righteous man this is assuredly so for his righteousness corresponds to Yezid above that is why it is written the righteous are the foundation Yezid of the world Mishlei 1025 and the earth which is Malchut is established upon him he is the pillar that upholds the world which is Malchut that is why he is called the foundation of the world and what is this Yezid it is the righteous thus Noach is the righteous below among the souls and hence it is written Noach was a righteous man to teach us that the world is based on him nine and the secret of all this is revealed in the words Noach walked with Elohim which mean to teach us that he never separated himself from him from Malchut and he merited being called a righteous man on earth as did the supernal is at the foundation of the world he is the covenant of peace and the peace of the world thus he is called man of the earth meaning the husband of the earth and that is why the verse is written Noach found favor in the eyes of Hashem 10 Rabbi Lazar asked what is the meaning of his generations in the verse perfect in his generations and he replied that they are his descendants who issued from him all of whom he perfected through his righteousness and by whom he was also perfected in other words the verse perfect in his generations has two meanings a his righteousness perfected all the generations that descended from him and b he was perfected by the generations that descended from him another explanation is that perfect means that he was born circumcised as it is written walk before me and be perfect Bereshit 171 meaning circumcised in his generations includes only Noach's descendants and not the generations in the world in general in other words even though the verse means that he was perfect in all the generations of the world it says his generations to indicate that all the generations of the world are his as they all descend from him 11 come and behold from the day the world was created Noach was destined to be joined in union with and to enter the ark and until they were joined as one the world had not reached a fully stable condition and as soon as this occurred it is written from these was the whole earth overspread Bereshit 919 what is meant by overspread these words are analogous to the verse and from hence the river parted Bereshit 210 meaning that spreading out is similar to the supernal ark which is the secret of the garden for from that point in the text onward we find the separation and diffusion of Progeny into all quarters of the world this means that after they were perfected in the ark they were able to come forth and exist in the world of separation without being annihilated as was the generation of the great flood twelve and all is one and one is like the other because the branches below are similar to their roots above so the verse states these are the generations of Noach these indicates that the other generations are no longer of any consequence because they were not everlasting in the world only is it the foundation of the world which is Noach produced the fruit that still exists in the world Rabbi Abba approached and kissed Rabbi Lazar saying the lion in his might has pierced through the rock and broke it asunder meaning that it was hard as a rock for him to understand the inner meaning of these verses but Rabbi Lazar removed all the difficulties he had in comprehending the text all this is certainly true because all that has been said about Noach and the ark below corresponds to their supernal roots in the world of Atzalot above even the measurements of the ark correspond to their roots above this effect. 13 Rabbi Lazar asked why is the name of Noach written twice and he answered each and every righteous person in the world has two spirits one stays in this world while the other is in the world to come and so we find that the Holy One blessed be he named all the righteous twice Moshe Moshe Shema 34 Yaakov Yaakov Bereshit 462 Avraham Avraham Ishmuel 310 Shmuel Shmuel Dash with the exception of its Haki is not named twice because when he approached the altar to be sacrificed the soul that was within him in this world left him and because it is said of Avraham blessed are you who resurrects the dead Dash that I ask lay not your hand upon the lad after he had lifted his hand intending to slay his child so only the soul of the world to come was returned to him and that is why he is not named twice its Haki its Haki and that is why you shall find that the name of the Holy One blessed be he was not unified upon any other righteous person during his lifetime it was unified only on its hot because he was already considered as dead for he had no soul of this world only that of the world to come he was like those who pass away from this world the verse states even in his holy ones he has no trust he of 1515 because he does not unify his
Name 2 is our bridge and link to the Creator. The name is like a strand of spiritual DNA that motivates and gives rise to our personal attributes, our inner character, and our mission in life. The section of the Zohar strengthens our name's spiritual function of connecting us to the light. 15 Rabbi Lazar opened his discourse with the verses. These are the generations of Noach and come behold the works of Hashem who has made desolations in the earth. Tehillim 468 and he asked, Come behold. What is the meaning of behold? And he answered, It is related to the verse. A grievous vision has been declared to me. Yeshayah 212 because by his deeds the Holy One blessed be he reveals his prophecy to man. And when a prophecy of grievous deeds is revealed beforehand, it is called the grievous vision who has made desolations. Have Shemot assuredly alludes to the word Shemot for a name is the cause of everything that happens. This means that we should consider the name of whatever happens for the Holy One blessed be he puts the name in the mouth of man so he can name whatever dwells or occurs on earth. So the verse is actually calling us to go and observe the works of Hashem through the names by which they are called on earth because the Holy One blessed be he acts beforehand putting names in the mouth of man is prophecy 16. The verse states and he called his name Noach saying this. Verse 529 Rabbi Lazar asked why does the verse read saying this and he answered the word saying refers to the female principle which is Malchut while this refers to the righteous who is Noach and the proof is that it is written here and elsewhere this shall comfort us this is Hashem we have hope for him. Yeshayah 259 and we learn through analogous meaning the word this refers here to Hashem who is called righteous and therefore the meaning of this in any other verse means righteous as well here it refers to Noach who is righteous like Hashem likewise the verse that States and he called his name Noach refers to the supernal female principle or Malchut who called him Noach for the female was saying this that is Noach shall console you as blessed are the righteous who are marked with the imprints of the ring of the king the holy one blessed be he for they are marked with his name and he has put names on earth meaning in man's mouth so that everything can be called by its name correctly 17 the verse states and he called the heavy tea his name Noach. Bershi 529 and it is also written and he called his name Yaakov Bershi 2526 why does it not say that in regard to Yaakov is with Noach because each one refers to a different level as it is written in the verse I saw E.T. Hashem Yeshayah 61 it does not say I saw Hashem but E.T. Hashem this indicates that the particle E.T. that has a specific meaning here too it is written of Noach and he called E.T. his name Noach S4 and he called his name Yaakov in reality his level is that of the Holy One blessed be he and this is why the word is not mentioned there but with Noach the particle E.T. that is mentioned so as to connect him with the Shechinah which is the female principle because the Shechinah is called E.T. the particle E.T. does not appear in Yaakov's name for his level is that of a chariot for the Holy One blessed be he while Noach who is the secret of the righteous and is always connected with the Shechinah has the word the preceding his name. Section 3 A good man lends with a good grace. We are given the opportunity to enhance our connection to the spiritual dimension of Yezidim. These are the generations of Noach. Rabbi Yehuda began his discourse on the verse. A good man lends with a good grace. He conducts his affairs just like Tehillim 1125. He said that a good man refers to the Holy One. Blessed be he who is called good as it is written. Hashem is good to all. Tehillim 1459. And it is also stated that Hashem is a man of war. Shemot 153. He is gracious and lends Yezid to all because Yod Hei who is Zeir and bestows and lends his abundance of Mokin upon Yezid to the place that has nothing of its own which is female. That place the female principle is nourished by Yezid. The words he conducts his affairs just refer to the fact that the female principle is nourished only according to his judgment which is the Mokin of the light of Shachma as it is written. Justice and judgment are the Habitation of your throne, Tehillim 8514. So justice, which is the female principle, is nourished by judgment, and the secret of the aforementioned loan is that it is the supernal mother. The female principle has nothing of her own with which to receive the mokin. She has only that which she borrows from the supernal mother and receives through Zeir and as is already known. So the meaning of the verse, a good man who is the Holy One, blessed be he, is that he lends with a good grace abundance to Yezid and the female principle, and in so doing he orders his affairs, which is the female principle, according to his judgment. The great mokin called judgment 19. A different meaning is that a good man signifies the righteous, as it is written, say to the righteous that it shall be well with him, or that he is good, for they shall eat the fruit of their doings. Yeshayah 310. So the righteous are called good. Rabbi Yossi said that a good man alludes to Noach, as it is written, Noach was a Righteous man Rabbi Yitzhak said that a good man alludes to the glory of the Shabbat referring to the Mokin of the day of Shabbat because the text begins with the words it is a good thing to give thanks to Hashem Tehillim 922.20 Rabbi Shia said it all amounts to the same thing and they all said one thing that the righteous produces offspring in the world he also asked who are the offspring of the world and he answered they are the souls of the righteous as they are the fruit of it. And the work of the Holy One blessed be he 21 Rabbi Shimon said when the Holy One blessed be he puts on his diadems he crowns himself from above and from below above by the region of absolute depth which is Abba and Ima and below by the souls of the righteous the result is that an increment of life from above and below embraces the place of sanctuary on all sides causing the cistern to become full and the sea to be replenished thereby providing life to all section. For drink water out of your own cistern or realm of Malchut cannot draw in the light without first arousing desire and desire is aroused through the building of one's vessel according to the Zohar righteous souls build vessels through their positive actions and spiritual deeds the secret is concealed within the story of Noah the ark signifies the realm of Malchut Noah represents the righteous souls we learn that after Noah built and entered the ark he was then able to beget offspring to populate the world building and entering the ark is a mystery concerning the awakening of desire in Malchut and the offspring of Noah pertain to the light of the creator that is revealed in our physical realm we become righteous souls who awaken the desire of Malchut each time we recognize admit and thus uproot our own negative traits transforming them into positive attributes from this section we receive the ability to act with righteousness thus arousing the desires of Malchut 22 it is Written drink water out of your own cistern and running water out of your own well. Mishlei 515. So Rabbi Shimon asked, Why does it say your own cistern first and then your own well? Since a cistern is an empty place without water, while a well is a fountain of running water, they are completely different from each other. He answered, Both are the same meaning that both refer to the female principle, but when the poor are attached to that region, meaning when the female principle is not connected with Zeir who is her husband, she is considered to be poor and is called a cistern with nothing of its own except what is put inside it. This region is called Dalit, the fourth letter of the alphabet, or the female principle when she is not connected with Zeir 23. And later, when she mates with Zeir and she becomes a well filled from all sides. This means that she is filled from the right column of Zeir and from the central column of the souls of the righteous and what do. B signify it is the letter He or the female principle when she is mating with Zeir and she is called He when she is being filled from above from Zeir and flowing from below from the souls of the righteous. 24 A different explanation for the verse drink water out of your own cistern is that it refers to King David who wrote who shall be the one to give me water to drink of the cistern of Bethlehem 2 Shmuel 2315 here the words running waters refer to Abraham and out of the midst refers to Yaakov who is the center out of the middle means out of the center your own well signifies it's hot who is called well of living waters thus in this verse we find a reference to both the sacred chariot of the fathers and of King David 25 the passion of the female toward the male is only aroused when he puts the spirit into her and the flow of main and female waters ascends to meet the main desert male waters above and the congregation of Israel or Malchut. Conceives a longing for the Holy One, blessed be he only when the spirits of the righteous enter her in the secret of the female waters, and then do waters flow from within her that illuminate in her by the power of the souls of the righteous toward the male waters, which are the lights of the right column. And so all of these three aspects become one passion, one union, and one tie, and this appeases everyone. And it is then that the Holy One, blessed be he, walks among the righteous. So now we see five aspects of the Mokin, Nefesh, Rash, Nesh, Amachaya, and Yashida 26. Come and behold all the offspring, the souls from Gan Eden,
Negativity that hovers in our spiritual atmosphere can also influence others if their spiritual intentions are balanced on the narrow edge between good and evil should the remnants of a person's negative actions tip another person to the evil side the original wrongdoer must assume a measure of responsibility for the second sinner's actions 28 and the earth was corrupted before Elohim Beersheet 611 Rabbi Yehuda asked if it says and the earth was corrupted why before Elohim I yes it not obvious and he replied it is because they performed their sins openly in front of everyone's eyes and that is why the verse states before Elohim 29 Rabbi Yossi said I believe the opposite and the earth was corrupted before Elohim means that they did not sin openly they sinned only before Elohim and not before man but eventually they also sinned openly as it is written and the earth was filled with violence Bear sheet 611 which indicates that there was not a place on earth that did not witness their sins therefore the verse declares that they sinned in two ways that is in hiding and in the open 30 these are the generations of notes Rabbi Abba said from the day that Adam transgressed his master's command all succeeding generations were called sons of Adam but it was not said to praise him as much as to say these are the sons of the man who transgressed his master's command 31 but after notes had appeared all the descendants of mankind are called after his name the generations of Noach and this describes Noach's descendants in an honorable sense because he secured for us permanent existence in the world in contrast with the generations of Adam which describes us in a dishonorable sense as he caused us to be driven out of this world by bringing death to all 32 Rabbi Yossi said to him if it is really so we nevertheless see that in a later passage it is written Hashem came down to see the city and the tower that the children of Adam had built. Bereshit 115 the verse clearly states the children of Adam and not the children of Noach even though they were descended from Noach Rabbi Abba replied that because Adam sinned before his master the verse invokes his name and it would have been better for him not to have been created than to be mentioned in the Torah in such a matter 33 come and behold it is written a wise son makes a glad father Mishlei 101 when a son is good then all the people will mention his father's name with Praise, but if a son is bad, they will mention his father with reproach now because Adam sinned and transgressed his master's command when the tower builders came and rebelled against their master. What was written about them that the children of Adam had built? These are the children of Adam, the first man who had rebelled against his master and transgressed his command. 34 That is why the verse states that these are the generations of Noach. These generations are considered to be the descendants and not the former ones. Those who came out of the ark and emerged from it are the generations. The generations of Adam which did not come out of Gan Eden were not destined to exist. Section 6 If Adam had not sinned, he would not have begot any offspring from the time of Adam. Sin the children born into our world retained an aspect of the evil inclination within their essence. The section helps prevent this evil presence from occurring in new. Children, moreover, these words weaken and remove this negative influence from our children as we meditate upon the pages 35. Come and behold, if Adam had brought generations with him from Gan Eden, they would have lived for generations, and the light of the moon, which refers to the light of Malchut, would have never been darkened, and all would have lived forever, and not even the angels above could have stood before them and borne their light, brilliance, and wisdom, as it is written in the image of Elohim. Did he create him? Bear sheet 127, but because he was the cause of the sin, he had to leave Gan Eden and bear children outside, so his generations did not last because they were not fit. 36 Rabbi Shishkiah then asked, How could they have begotten offspring there in Gan Eden? Had the evil inclination not been drawn down on him and enticed him to sin, he would have dwelt alone in the world and would have not begotten any offspring. The same applies to the nation of Israel, had they not. Sent by the golden calf and drawn upon themselves the evil inclination after accepting the Torah they also would have never born any offspring and no new generations would have come into the world the main point is that the power of mating derives mainly from the evil inclination so without the evil inclination there can be no offspring 37 he answered had Adam not sinned he would not have born offspring from the side of the evil inclination but he would have born them from the side of the Holy Spirit but because he produced offspring only from the side of the evil inclination all the offspring of mankind who are the sons of Adam are born from the side of the evil inclination they have no existence and no permanence because the other side has been mixed with them 38 but if Adam had not sinned and had not been driven out of Gan Eden he would have begot offspring from the side of the Holy Spirit and they would have been as holy as the supreme angels and live generations Upon generations as angels do above this means that there are two kinds of mating one is the spiritual mating of the angels the second is the mating of Yezid for the souls that need for the evil inclination relates only to the mating of Yezid and not to the spiritual mating that comes from the side of the Holy Spirit but because he sinned and begot children outside Gan Eden and he did not merit to begot them in Gan Eden therefore they did not survive even only to take root in this world until Noach came and went into the ark and from the ark all descending generations of mankind emerged and spread to all four corners of the earth section 7 and Elohim saw the earth reading these paragraphs helps purify the earth which is constantly being corrupted and defiled through both small and large actions of negativity 39 and Elohim saw the earth and behold it was corrupt Bear sheet 612 why was the earth corrupt can it be that it deserved to be Punished and he answers yes because all flesh had corrupted its ways as has already been explained Rabbi she opened the discussion saying and Elohim saw from their deeds that they had repented from their evil way Yonah 310 come and behold when the people are righteous and observe the commandments of the Torah the earth is invigorated and full of joy and why is that because the Sheshanah dwells upon the earth and everyone both above and below is joyous 40 but when mankind corrupts its ways does not observe the commandments of the Torah and sins before its master then it is as if mankind drives the Sheshanah out of the world then the earth is left corrupt for the Sheshanah is repelled by it and does not dwell on it then the earth is corrupt and why should the earth be corrupt because a different spirit rests upon it causing the corruption 41 can the same be applied to the land of Israel as well that is another spirit could be dwelling there but we have learned that no other spirit rests upon the land of Israel, and there is no other appointed angel beside the Holy One, blessed be he himself. If so, then why was the land of Israel corrupted? And he replied, Come and behold, it is true that no other appointee or messenger dwells in the land of Israel beside the Holy One, blessed be he himself. But there is one time that the evil spirit may govern the land in order to destroy people. How do we know about that from King David as it is written? And he saw the angel of Hashem standing between the earth and the heavens with a drawn sword in his hand stretched out over Jerusalem. I Rahim M2116. And then the land was destroyed. 42 Rabbi Lazar said, Even in that time when he saw the angel of Hashem standing, it was the Holy One, blessed be he, because what is written here, the angel of Hashem is analogous to the angel who redeemed me, Bereshit 4516, and also to the angel of the Elohim Shemot 1519. And as these verses refer to the Holy One, blessed be he. So does this one be it for the best or the worst the Holy One blessed be he shall always govern this land for the best because the land of Israel was never passed on to any other supernal governor and the Holy One blessed be he alone can do it good and all the other inhabitants of the world should be ashamed of their deeds because they are under ministers for the worst means that only the Holy One blessed be he rules over this land to prevent the other ministers from delighting in ruling over. If 43 and if you will ask is it not written for she has seen that the heathens entered into her sanctuary each 110 and have destroyed the temple which implies that if really no other ministers ruled then the temple would not have been destroyed come and behold it is stated for you have done it with 21 and Hashem has done what he has devised each 217 so you can see that it was done by the Holy One himself blessed be he and not by ministers 44 come and behold it is written and Elohim saw the earth and behold it was corrupt. Bear sheet 112 it was surely corrupt and furthermore it is also stated and Elohim saw from their deeds that they had repented from their evil ways. Yonah 310 because then the earth calls out to the heavens above to Zeir and and is raised to the upper grade it beautified its face as though it were a female beautifying herself for the male in the same manner the earth tried to please the king who is Zeir and for she raised righteous children. For him 45 while here what is written about the generation of the flood that did not repent and Elohim saw the earth and behold it was corrupt like a wife who committed adultery and hides her face from her husband when the sins of mankind multiply and become overwhelming the earth sins openly
He has performed his word means that he ripped his precious cloak that he commanded in the days of old means that this cloak he commanded from the supernal days of old meaning from the Svarat of the parts of Abadic called days of old on the day the temple was destroyed he ripped his cloak for it is his honor and perfection namely Malchut which is called the honor of Hashem and it is his perfection because through it he perfects himself with the Mokin of the light of Chakma and he ripped it means that the first nine Svarat left it and only the tenth remained forty eight he asked Hashem has done that which he devised is this the way of a king to devise evil against his sons even before they have sinned and he answered it is like a king who had a precious vessel and was constantly afraid that it might one day break so he used to watch it by keeping it under his eye one day his son came along and made the king angry so the king took his precious vessel and smashed it that is why it says that which he has devised forty nine come and behold from the day the temple was built the holy one blessed be he used to watch it because it was very precious to him and he used to worry that Israel might sin and cause the temple to be destroyed so every time he came to the temple he wore a precious mantle meaning that he made it with Malchut but when Israel sinned and made the king furious the temple was destroyed and he tore his cloak apart that is the meaning of Hashem has done that which he has devised dash he has performed fifty his word have imrado as mentioned here refers to Malchut which was sitting in the beginning on the top of the tree had Amir and the king crowned himself with it and he had before him a beautiful tree the tree of the souls before they come into this world in front of his eyes but now after the destruction of the temple he ripped his cloak meaning that the upper nine Sfirot left Malchut and only the light of Nefesh remained there so now. After the destruction there is sadness before him all over in the external houses but not in the internal ones as the verse reads Behold the valiant ones shall cry without Yeshayah 337 that is only external ones 51 and on that day Hashem Sebot he called to weeping to mourning to baldness and to girding with sackcloth Yeshayah 2212 this means that only on that day when the temple was destroyed did he call for weeping and mourning but aside from that day there is no greater joy for the Holy One blessed be he than when the wicked of the world who provoke him are removed from this world as it is written and when the wicked perish there is joy Mishlei 1110 so in each generation when judgment is executed on the wicked of the world there is joy and songs before the Holy One blessed be he 52 and if you claim that we learn that there is no joy before the Holy One blessed be he when he passes his judgment on the sinners come and behold when judgment is delivered on the Wicked there is joy and exaltation before him because they are removed from this world but when is their joy when the time that he has waited for them to repent is over and they have not returned to him from sinning but if judgment is delivered on them before their time has come and the measure of their sins has not yet been completed it is as it is written the iniquity of the Amor is not yet full Bereshit 1516 this means that there still is a chance that they may repent thus there is no joy and there is grief before him because of their destruction 53 but you might ask if their time has not come yet then why should judgment be delivered on them because it is they who inflict the punishment on themselves as the Holy One blessed be he would never punish them before their time has come because they associate with Israel in an effort to harm them he passes his judgment on them and entirely removes them from the world before their time is up and now there is grief before him for he destroyed them before their time this is also the reason why he drowned the Egyptians in the sea and destroyed the enemies of Israel in the days of Yehoshaphat they were all destroyed before their time because they wanted to harm the nation of Israel 54 so only when the time that he waits for them is completed and they do not mend their ways is their destruction a cause for joy and exaltation before him the only exception was the time when the temple was destroyed because even though their time for angering him had expired there was no joy before him from that time onward there has been happiness neither above nor below section 9 for yet seven days learning the words that compose these powerful verses help us understand the spiritual dangers associated with the wasting of one sperm the negative forces in our midst automatically attach themselves to any gateway where the greatest light can shine this is yet in the other world and the sexual organ in the physical world the Kabbalist however does not consider the big concepts of morality and codes of right and wrong as motivation for maintaining sexual relations within the spiritual confines of marriage rather it is our own spiritual understanding of the metaphysical forces at work including the laws of cause and effect that will provide the impetus historically religious and moral authorities according to the Kabbalist have not been granted great influence in regulating sexual relations instead individual people must be empowered with knowledge that can assist them in understanding the consequences of their actions if they are to be truly motivated people must recognize the benefits to themselves derived from any particular spiritual action 55 for yet seven days and I will cause it to rain upon the earth 40 days and 40 nights Bereshit 74 Rabbi Yehuda said what is the meaning of these 40 days and 40 nights these 40 days are to Strike the wicked of the world as is written forty strikes he may hit him and not exceed the barim two hundred and fifty three corresponding to the four winds of the world which are the secret of Chakma by Tiferet and Malchut as each one has ten there are altogether forty for man was created from the four winds of the world so the verse continues and every living substance that I have made will I destroy from the face of the earth forty strikes are needed to destroy the world fifty six Rabbi Yitzhak was visiting Rabbi Shimon and he asked him about the verse that states and the earth was corrupt before the Elohim now if it was man who sinned and was corrupt what was the earth sin Rabbi Shimon answered as it is written for all flesh had corrupted his way upon earth and also and the land was defiled therefore I did visit the iniquity thereof upon it Vayikra 825 so it is mankind that sins but if you ask what is the sin of the earth you should know that mankind constitutes the essence of the earth of mankind corrupted it has become corrupted this is proven by the verse and Elohim saw the earth and beheld it was corrupt for all flesh had corrupted their way upon the earth 57 come and behold all of man's sins and corruption can be atoned for by repentance but by the sin of spilling a seed on the earth man corrupts himself and the earth as well and of such a person it is written the stain of your iniquity remains before me your may 222 and for you are not an L that has pleasure in wickedness evil shall not sojourn with you Tehillim 55 this means that a person who wastes his semen on the earth is called evil bad and he shall not sojourn anymore with the holy one blessed be he in other words he shall not accept his repentance except after great penitence it is also written that er Yehuda's firstborn was wicked in the eyes of Hashem and Hashem slew him Bereshit 387 as already explained elsewhere 58 Rabbi Yehuda asked why did the holy one blessed be he bringeth judgment on the world namely the generation of the flood punishing them with water and not with fire or something else Rabbi Shimon replied that there is a secret behind this as they corrupted their ways the upper waters and the lower waters were unable to join as the male and the female anyone who corrupts his ways also corrupts the male and female waters this means that he causes a defect in the male and female waters preventing them from being connected with each other so they were punished by water just as they had sinned 59 these waters were boiling and they skinned them alive just like they corrupted their ways in boiling water one judgment against another means that he punished them measure for measure all the fountains of the great deep broke open bear sheet 711 refers to the lower waters while and the windows of heaven were opened refers to the upper waters thus they were punished by both upper and lower waters 60 Rabbi Shia and Rabbi you see were walking on their way reaching some great mountains they found human bones that belonged to the generation of the flood they walked alongside one of these bones which measured 300 steps astonished they said to each other this clarifies what our friends have said that they did not fear the judgment of the holy one blessed be he as is written they said to El depart from us for we do not desire the knowledge of your ways Eo 2114 so what did they do they clogged the fountains of the deep with their feet but the waters were too hot and when they could no longer bear it they slipped fell on the ground and eventually died section 10 and Noach begot three sons we receive assistance in purifying our souls from the hand of the creator himself who literally removes the soul cleanses it renews it from one of the three upper worlds discussed here and then gently returns it to our being this process which occurs as we meditate upon it Zohar is subtle and unobserved by the human senses. 61 and Noach begot three sons. Bereshit 532. Rabbi Shia said to Rabbi Yossi, Come and let me tell you what I have heard about this. It resembles a situation in which a man mates with his wife once and then two or three children are born. Each one is different from the other in his ways and character.
himself is aided with the holy Neshama, he is then purified, sanctified, and called holy. But if he does not merit and does not come to purify himself, then only two great Nefesh and Rash are open to him. For him there is no holy Neshama, not only that, but if a person comes to defile himself, then he is defiled and loses heavenly support. Therefore, each person is judged according to his ways. That is why if a person repents and comes to purify himself, he will get the support again. But you may point out. When a person is born, he receives only the nefesh of the clean cattle. Still, the rash is always included with the nefesh, as already explained. Thus, he has the nefesh and the rash as soon as he is born. But the neshama from the side of the pure cattle is received according to his deeds, and this applies to every grade or level. Tisaf Addendum 64. We are the high ties of the greatest of fortresses. The term ties refers to the nefesh, rash, and neshama, which are called three ties. In other words, our nefesh, rash, and neshama are tied together in the central column, which is the strongest of all the fortresses. It is capable of standing up to the other side. Therefore, the eyes and the ears are open, meaning Chakma and Bana, who are called eyes and ears. A voice from the voices descends from above and smashes mountains and rocks, meaning that the central column, which is called the voice, and I asked includes the three voices of Chakma, Bana, and Dad of Dad, but only one. Voice descends and illuminates from above downward and smashes all the strong clipot that are called mountains and rocks. But the two upper voices, which are Chakma and Bana of Dad, are not drawn down. Those who see but do not see and who have become hard of hearing and have difficulty seeing, who do not see, do not hear, and do not know how to understand the one located and included between the two, they are pushed out 65. They cling to these two, meaning to the two columns of right and left, which are Chakma and Bana, while the one, the best of craftsmen, which is the central column and the master craftsman, on whom all the Mokin depend, does not reside among them. Therefore, they do not enter among the holy books because all those who do not have the craftsman or the central column residing among them are not written in the book of memories. This means that they receive neither the great Mokin of Bana, which is called the book of memories, nor the book of life. Therefore, they are erased from the book of life and have no share in it as it is written let them be blotted out of the book of the living and not be written with the righteous tale 6928 woe to those who leave this world erased from the book of life who shall ask about them and plead for them when they are turned over to hands of the angel Duma and are in the burning fire which they can leave only on the first day of the month and on the days of Shabbat as it is written and it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another and from one Shabbat to another shall all flesh come to worship before me says Hashem Yeshayah 6623 when the Shabbat and the beginning of the month are over an announcer from the north says the wicked shall be turned back to Shol Tehillim 918 angels of destruction and gather and attack them with four burning winds of fire in the valley of Ben Hinnom they do so to punish the wicked who spoiled the four aspects of Shachma by Natai Fred Malchut 67 They are visited three times a day during the three periods of mating between Zeir and Ben and the female principal. These visits occur during the three prayers of each day to ease their punishment. Not only that, but when Yisrael says aloud, Amen, may the great name of Hashem be praised during the Kadesh, then there is mating in the upper worlds, and the Holy One, blessed be He, is filled with compassion and mercy and forgives all. Then He signals to the angel appointed over the gates of Gehenna, whose name is Samriel, and who has three keys with which He opens the three gates to the side of the desert, and then they see the light of this world, and immediately as a fiery smoke comes and conceals the ways of light, and it becomes dark. 68 Then the three in charge who have trials in their hands use them to fan the smoke and blow it back to its place, then they are at ease for an hour and a half, after which they return to the fire. They are also at ease three times a day as well. As each and every time Israel answer Amen, may the great name of Hashem be praised. Happy are the righteous whose paths and ways illuminate and shine to all directions in the world to come as it is written. But the path of just men is like the gleam of sunlight that shines ever more brightly until the height of noonday. Mishlei 418 section 11 The punishment in Gehenna, the positive and healthy fear of sin can inspire us to pursue spiritual development. Thereby avoiding the negative repercussions inherent in our world of cause and effect. 69 Rabbi Abba said that in Gehenna there are compartments upon compartments, seconds, thirds, and so on until seven. Our friends have already explained this issue. Happy are the righteous who guard themselves from the sins of the wicked and do not follow in their paths nor defile themselves. For when a person who has become impure dies, he passes onto the world of truth and goes down into Gehenna, there he descends. Until he reaches the lowest compartment 70 and there are two compartments close to each other that are called SHOL and Abaddon whoever reaches SHOL is judged and punished there and is then raised to a different but higher compartment this continues until he is released from there but those who go down and reach Abaddon are never raised from there again that is why it is called Abaddon lost because they are lost there forever 71 come and behold notes the righteous warned the people of his generation but they did not eat him until the holy one blessed be he brought the punishment of Gehenna upon them what is the punishment Gehenna it is fire and snow water and fire the first is cold the other boiling and all of that generation were sentenced to punishment in Gehenna and lost from the world 72 after that punishment the world was able to exist and function correctly notes entered the ark and brought into it all the species of living creatures of the world so of course Noach was a tree that begot fruit, meaning that he was Yezid who is called righteous, and then all the species of the world emerged from the ark just as it happened above, meaning just as Yezid and Malchut above 73 come and behold when the tree that begets fruit Yezid of Zeir and Ben is joined with the fruit tree which is Malchut, then all the species of above big and small animals and all their varieties come forward each with other members of its species as it is written both small and great. Beasts Talim 10425 so was the case with Noach and the ark they all emerged from the ark meaning they all were corrected while they were in the ark it is the same with the offspring above who received their correction from Malchut and the world exists just as it does above and this is why Noach is called the man of the earth and a just man meaning that the righteous is just as is Yezid above as has been previously explained 74 Rabbi Shia said for 300 years before the great flood Noach. Warned them to change their ways, but they did not listen to him until the time when the Holy One blessed be he had finished waiting for them to repent. This is as written, yet his days shall be a hundred and twenty years. Then they were lost from the world come and behold in the previous portion of the week it is written, and it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born to them. Bear sheet sixty one, and they went naked in front of all, and then what is written, and the sons of Elohim saw the daughters of men, bear sheet sixty two. This was the main cause that brought them to continue sinning until it finally caused them to be destroyed, and because of that they followed the evil inclination, held fast to its trunk and roots, rejected the holy faith among themselves, and became defiled. So it is written, the end of all flesh has come before me, bear sheet six hundred and thirteen to teach that they were enticed. Section twelve, the end of all. Flesh when the angel of death is given free reign as a result of the accumulated negative actions of mankind his power becomes vastly enlarged even innocent souls who inadvertently cross his path fall victim to his powers of death and destruction nevertheless Noah was able to find refuge within the ark the Zohar reveals that the Zohar itself is an embodiment of the ark and can therefore provide protection in times of chaos and destruction 75 Elohim said to Noach the end of all flesh has come before me bear sheet 613 Rabbi Yehuda related this verse to the one reading Hashem make me know my end and the measure of my days what it is let me know how short lived I am Tehillim 95 King David said to the Holy One blessed be he there are two ends one on the right and one on the left and there are two paths for man to walk to the world of truth there is an end to the right because it is written at the end of the days also write Daniel 1213 and there also is an end of the left as is written he sets an end to darkness and the ending of all things does he investigate the stones of darkness and the shadow of death Eo 2830 who is the investigator he is none other than the end who is to the left he is the investigator who brings darkness upon the faces of the creature 76 the end of the right is as we have previously said to the end of the right as the holy one blessed be he said to Daniel but go your way till the end before you shall rest Daniel 1213 Daniel asked him in this world or in the world of truth he answered him in the world of truth as it is written they shall rest in their resting places Yeshua 572 he asked him at the time when
The wicked people of the world go out of their way to attract the angel of death upon themselves in order to bring darkness upon themselves. Therefore, because they give him permission, he grabs the soul, but he never takes the soul without permission. That is why the verse reads, "Has come before me." This means that he comes before me to get permission to bring darkness upon the faces of people of the world, and that is why it is written, "I will destroy them with the earth because I gave him." Permission make an ark of gopher wood on which to save yourself so that he should have no power over you. 79 Come and behold we have learned that when there is a plague in a city or in the world a person should not show himself in the marketplace because the angel of destruction has received permission to destroy everything. This is why the Holy One blessed be he told no it behooves you to take heed and not show yourself before the angel of destruction so that he may not have power to rule over you. 80 But you might say who mentioned an angel of destruction here it was only the onrush of the waters that became a flood. Now come and behold whether the world is stricken or even when the world is only given over for judgment the angel of destruction is in the middle of all punishment done in the world. Now here as well there was a flood the angel of destruction walked within the flood and as a result he was called the flood thus he was included within it so the Holy One. Blessed be he told Noach to hide himself inside the ark and not to show himself to the world 81 and you may wonder how the ark survived even though it was seen in the world through which the angel of destruction walked but as long as the face of the person is not seen by the angel of destruction he cannot rule over him and how do we know this from Egypt because the verse reads as none of you shall go out of the door of his house until the morning Shema 12 22 the reason is that the angel of destruction was present outside and could destroy anyone and none should be seen before him this is why Noach and all those who joined him hid within the ark there the angel of destruction had no power over the 82 Rabbi Shia and Rabbi Yossi were on their way when they came upon the mountains of Ararat where they observed some deep ravines which had been left from the days of the great flood Rabbi Shia told Rabbi Yossi these ravines are from the days of the great flood and the holy one Blessed be he has left them to stay on throughout all the generations to come so that the sins of the wicked would not be erased before him. 83 Because it is the way of the Holy One. Blessed be he, he desires that the righteous who fulfill his will be remembered above as well as below. He desires that their memories not be forgotten through the generations. Likewise he also desires that the wicked who do not fulfill his will be remembered. He desires that their sins never be forgotten and their punishments and their wicked ways always remembered as it is written. The stain of your iniquity remains before me. Your Maya 222 section 13 cry you with a shrill voice for an echo. Whereas Moses was able to help generate the revelation of light on Mount Sinai including the state of immortality Noah was unable to accomplish the same feat in his time. The Zohar explains that Noah was a force of one while Moses achieved the critical mass of people through the 600,000 souls who stood on Sinai awareness and inner motivation to bring about the total removal of evil and chaos from this earth is imbued to the reader through these passages they awaken a desire to transform our own negative nature and to share the light of the Zohar according to all Kabbalists the Zohar is the most effective of all instruments for removing the negative inclinations born into the hearts of mankind when a critical mass of people have embraced its wisdom we will permanently eradicate all of humanity's pain and suffering 84 Rabbi Yossi quoted cry you with a shrill voice O daughter of Galim Harkolesh O you poor and Eto Yeshea 1030 our companions have already explained this verse which refers to the congregation of Israel which is Malchut so cry with a shrill voice O daughter of Galim refers to the daughter of Abraham the patriarch in the secret of the father establishes the daughter and he is Jesus that ascended to Chachma and when the daughter has the mokin of Abba, she is then called Bat Galim, lit the daughter of springs as it is written, the spring had Gal which is closed, Sher Hashirim 412, meaning that Malchut is called Gal or spring when she receives the mokin of the father Abba, therefore here she is also called Galim or springs because springs refer to the upper lights that gather enter Malchut and fill her. The gathering of these lights is the secret of the three vowels, Kolam, Shuruk, and Chirik, as has already been quoted, your shoots are a garden of pomegranates, Sher Hashirim 413, so the shoots refer also to the upper lights that gather and are drawn into Malchut like streams and rivers. 85, listen, Lesha, the word Lesha also appears in the verse, the lion had lashed perishes for lack of prey, Yo 411, this means it is the opposite of the name Galim as it refers to the time when Malchut lacking abundance has no importance, Lash is the masculine term, Lesha is the feminine. So when the term Lesha appears it refers to Malchud which is the female principle and he asks why is she called by the name Lesha is it because it is written lion which is strongest among beasts Mishlei 3030 does this signify the lion's might or is it written to remind us that the lion perishes for lack of prey which I ask because of lack of abundance and he answered all that is said refers to Lesha the term Lesha refers to the time when Malchud is at the point of Shuruk when both the aspects of Bura and the lack of abundance converge and appear in her at the stage Malchud is called the lower Bura as she is drawn down from the upper Bura meaning from the Bura Abana and that is why she is described as the lion which is strongest of all beasts but also she is the lion perishes for lack of prey when these streams which are the supernal lights depart and do not enter her then she is called the Lesha lioness which perishes for lack of prey as is written the lion Perishes for lack of prey and the lion's whelps are scattered abroad. Eo 41186 and when the verses mention Lesha or poor Anato meaning the poorest of the poor the meaning is the same as in of the priests that were in Anato. Your Maya 11 and Anato get on your fields. I may 226. These terms of Anato always indicate poverty. He further asked what does Solomon want to teach us by the term Anato and he answered as long as King David was alive Abitar became wealthy and prosperous. But after that when King David died Abitar became poor then King Solomon told him Anato get on your fields. 87 he asked what is the true reason that Solomon called him by the name Anato why should he call him with the name of disgrace and he answered he wanted to tell him that during your days my father lived in poverty but now that I am rich get on your fields for a person who served during the days of poverty is not fit to serve during the days of prosperity he further stated. That we should now explain why Abitar was called Anato should one assume that it was because he was from Anato we have already learned from the verse and one of the sons of Akimelech the son of Akitah named Abitar escaped Ishmuel 2220 and he came from Nob the city of the priests we have learned that Nob is also called Anato and why is it called Anato because of the poverty and destitution to which it had been reduced by King Shal through the slaughter of all its priestly inhabitants nevertheless this is not the true reason for the name because Anato was the name of a village that is not Nob rather King Solomon called Abitar Anato because you were afflicted had hidden it in all that my father was afflicted I may lash him 226 and because he also came from the city of Nob so the true reason is that because King David lived in poverty in his days he called him thus Anato 88 Rabbi Shia said that the world was in a state of poverty from the time that Adam Transgressed the command of the Holy One, blessed be he, until the time when Noach came forward and offered his sacrifice thereby settling the world. Rabbi Yossi said that the world was not settled and the land was not pure from the pollution of the serpent until Israel stood at Mount Sinai and held onto the tree of life. Only then did the world settle properly. 89 And had the children of Israel not sinned before the Holy One, blessed be he, they would have never died for the pollution of it. Serpent had been purged from them, but because of their sin, the first tablets which brought freedom from all sins, freedom from the serpent who is the end of all flesh, this is the angel of death, were broken. 90 And when the Levites rose up to slay the guilty, that is when Moshe told them, Put every man his sword by his side and slay every man his brother. Shema 3227 And the evil serpent rose up in front of them, nevertheless he could not dominate them because all Israel was girt with a Special armor that protected them against his attacks. The special armor is the ornamentation that they received at Mount Chorab. Thus the serpent could not have prevailed against them. However, when he said to Moshe, therefore now put your ornaments off from yourself. Shema 335. The permission to rule over Israel was given to the serpent. 91. Come and behold, it is written, and the children of Israel were stripped of their ornaments from the Mount of Chorab. Shema 336. So he asked, were stripped? It should have been written, stripped themselves. And he answered that the words were stripped. Show us that they were actually stripped by another power as permission was given
by which we utilize these spiritual tools to cleanse our world and our souls of the negative residues from our egotistic behavior we can help facilitate all these processes as we meditate and intently browse through the ancient text 94 as they were walking along they saw a Jew coming toward them Rabbi Yussi said that this person is a Jew because he looks like a Jew when he reached them they asked him who he was he told them that he was on a religious errand as he lived in the village of Draymond and the time of the holiday have Sukkot having arrived they needed the palm branch had Lula and the other three components this is citron myrtle and willow he was on his way to cut them down for the purpose of the commandment they walked together 95 the Jews spoke to them and asked have you heard why we need these four kinds with the palm branch to appease the world during this holiday but not at any other time they told him our colleagues have already explained the subject by Telling the reason but if you have a new explanation then say it 96 H he said the place where we live is indeed a small one but all indulge in the study of the Torah we have a rabbi who is well known among the rabbis whose name is Rabbi Yitzhak and who is the son of Rabbi Yussi from Mechuzai he teaches us new explanations of the Torah each and every day and he said that during this holiday it is the time of the domination of Yisrael when Yisrael obtains domination over the ministers of it. 70 nations so it is written then the malicious waters would have gone over our soul blessed be Hashem who has not given us as a prey to their teeth Tehillim 1245 to 6 and he asked does water have teeth and he replied that they the malicious waters refer to the other nations and the teeth refer to the supernal ministers of these nations who are worshippers of the planets and constellations they are blessed through Israel and they are called malicious waters as it says the malicious waters. 97 to dominate the ministers of the nations we come with the holy name that is represented by those four kinds with the palm branch the myrtle is the secret of Chesed Bure and Tiferet from the letter Yud of the holy name the willow branches are the secret of Netzach and Hot from the first letter A of the holy name the palm branch is the secret of Yezid from the letter Vav of the holy name and the citron Hebetrog is the secret of Malchut of the lower A of the holy name together they appease the holy one blessed be he and rule over the malicious waters with the secret of the holy name they bring and arouse upon us the holy waters namely the abundance of the upper waters for the water libation ceremony at the altar which is Malchut and these upper waters overcome the malicious waters 98 and he went on to say that on Rosh Hashanah the new year the first awakening which is the female principle reoccurs and appears in the world this means that the female principle returns to its previous status on the fourth day of the creation and he asked what is this first awakening and he answered that it is the lower courthouse that is aroused in order to judge the world it is when the holy one blessed be he sits on the throne of judgment and judges the world 99 this house of judgment rules and judges the world until Yom Hakipurim the day of atonement when the face of the female principle lights up this means that the female principle receives the upper three spirot. Keter Chakma and Bina called the face at this time the slanderous serpent leaves the world alone because he is busy with the scapegoat which has been offered to him this offering is from the side of the spirit of defilement which is appropriate for the slanderous serpent who is the prosecutor so while he is occupied with his scapegoat he does not approach the holy temple or the female principle that is he does not approach the children of Israel in order to prosecute them anymore and does not separate the mating of Zeir and Pin and the female principle 100 the scapegoat is like the sin offering of the Hegot on the first day of the month because he is occupied with IT the face of the holy temple which is the female principle lights up and this is how all Israel find mercy in the eyes of the holy one blessed be he and how the sins of Israel are removed but there is one secret he told them that may not be revealed except to exceedingly wise saintly and pious men rabbi. Yussi asked him and what is that secret so he answered I have not yet checked you out so I cannot tell whether you are fit to hear the secret 100 and when they proceeded on their way and after a while he said when the moon which is the female principle approaches the sun which is Zeir and Pin and the holy one blessed be he stirs up the northern side which is the left column that is drawn from the point of Shuruk and he grasps her lovingly and draws her toward himself this is the secret of asking. Permission through appeasement and then the southern side which is the right column is aroused from the other side namely from the side of the point of Chirik and eventually the moon which is the female principle rises and joins the east which is Zeir and thus she draws sustenance from both sides from the south and from the north and receives the blessing or the abundance of the mating in silence in silence means that she is in the stage of the six ends and under the influence of the point of Chirik which is the secret of the verse but her voice was not heard I Shmuel 113 for the words voice and speaking signify the upper three spirot and now the moon is blessed and filled with the abundance as a woman approaches her husband this means that a complete mating has occurred in which the entire mokin are revealed to the world 102 just as there are secrets pertaining to the body of man and its correspondence to the Zeir and so too there are secrets pertaining to the body of the female principle of Zeir and Pin and the only difference between them is their color the color green is the secret of Zeir and Pin while red is the secret of the female principle nevertheless the shapes of their parts are similar and as there is that above which joins her and rises to receive her with love so below Atzala beneath the moon of the other side lies the secret of the lower man he also has the same parts of the body namely the left and right and so on what we learn from this is that all the levels are modeled after one another such that the shapes of the upper levels carry down to the lower ones and the arousal of any one of these aspects arouses an opposite aspect in the other levels as shall further be explained 103 above the left arm of Zeir and Pin holds the female principle and rises lovingly toward her but below the serpent which is the left arm of the spirit of defilement rides upon the female principle of defilement and he who rides upon the serpent who is the male of the defilement and mates with him grasps him by this he approaches the moon which is the female principle and draws her toward him meaning that he sucks from her from between the clinging meaning the place of the mating and thus she becomes defiled 104 then Yisrael below offer the scapegoat on the first day of the lunar month the serpent is drawn to it for his entire craving is for the illumination of the left through the scapegoat Yisrael draws the sweetening of Malchut in Bina and the illumination of the left from below upward then the moon is purified and becomes fit to receive the abundance from her husband Zeir and she then climbs up and clings above to Zeir and in order to be blessed while before when she was below and had not yet mated with Zeir and she was dark now her face lights up so now we have explained the issue of the scapegoat on the first day of the lunar month whose purpose is to purify the female principle it draws the mercy of Bina and the illumination of the left to the female principle returning her to pure state although the serpent can still arouse the judgment after she has been revealed to him he does not do so because his whole desire is for the left column whose illumination he does not want to spoil now in effect the prosecutor becomes the counsel for the defense 105 the same is true of Yom Kippur another day on which the evil serpent is kept busy with the scapegoat which is the illumination of the left just as on the first day of the lunar month when the serpent is busy with the scapegoat the moon is free from him and may busy herself in protecting Israel as a mother protects her children and the holy one blessed be he blesses Israel from above and forgives the people for their sins 106 later in the year when Israel reached Sukkot the feast of tabernacle the right column of above is aroused as alluded to in the verse and his right arm embraces me this allows the moon who is a female principle to attach herself to him namely to the right and then her face is fittingly illuminated and she shares her blessings with all the ministers below namely the 70 ministers of the nations by keeping them occupied with their blessings they are distracted from approaching and sucking from Israel's portion as is described with the serpent and the female principle his occupation with the scapegoat deflects his prosecution of the female principle 107 the same applies below in this world when all the other nations are blessed they all become occupied with themselves and do not meddle with Israel or covet its portion just as we described previously the serpent with the female principle and the 70 supernal ministers with Israel so I ask the case with the 70 nations and Israel below this is why during Sukkot when they offer the 70 bulls as a sacrifice Israel draw blessings down to all the supernal ministers of the 70 nations so they will be occupied with their blessings and not meddle with Israel 108 when the moon is full of blessings from above the children of Israel come and draw sustenance from her for themselves alone that is why it is written on the eighth day there shall be a solemn assembly have at Zareth for you Bimid bar 2435 
regales his governors and ministers with dishes of vegetables and beef only after they are satisfied can he sit in peace with his friend and enjoy the supernal banquet with the world's finest delicacies spread before them and while alone with the king his friend puts before him all his petitions and requests which the king grants so just as the king enjoys the company of his beloved alone with no stranger disturbing them the holy one blessed be he enjoys Israel hence it is written on the eighth day there shall be a solemn assembly for you 111 Rabbi Yossi and Rabbi Shia said the holy one blessed be he established the right way for us happy are those who delve into the Torah they approach the Jew and kiss him Rabbi Yossi applied to him the verse and all your children shall be taught of Hashem and great shall be the peace of your children Yeshua 5413 when they reached the field they all sat down that man asked what changed when the verse says and Hashem reigned upon some and upon Amor of Beersheet 1924 and did not use the term Elohim and what changed during the great flood when the term Elohim comes into frequent usage while the term Hashem is mentioned in the overthrowing of the cities of Sdom and Amor is not used at all 112 we have learned that everywhere the term and Hashem is mentioned it indicates him and his court of judgment namely Zeir and which is mercy as well as his female principle which is judgment but when the term Elohim is mentioned alone this indicates only the court of judgment namely the female principle without Zeir and in the case of some judgment was passed not to destroy the world and thus Zeir and was involved in carrying out judgment that is why Hashem is written Yud Hey indicating the attribute of mercy and he worked with his court of justice which is his female principle for the letter Vav which carries the meaning of the English word and is joined with Yud Hey indicating the female principle but in the case of the great flood the whole world and all of its inhabitants were destroyed that is why the event is described with the term Elohim indicating the attribute of judgment alone untempered by mercy 113 and although you may say that Noach and all who were with him were saved and not all were destroyed it is only because they were hidden from sight and unseen by the angel of destruction thus it is considered that everything namely everything that was seen by the eyes of the angel of destruction that existed in the world was destroyed that is why the term and Hashem indicates that he does not destroy all that is revealed to the eyes in the case of the destruction of SDOM however the term Elohim indicates that all should be carefully concealed because he destroys everything namely all that is revealed to the eye that is why the term Elohim refers to the female principle alone distinct from Zeir and who is mercy 114 and this is the secret of the verse Hashem sat at the flood Tehillim 2910 so he asked what is the meaning of the term sat and he answered that if it had not been written in the scriptures we could not have said it because the term sat indicates that he sat alone by himself and was distinct from the judgment that was passed at the great flood this is based on the analogy that here it is written Hashem sat while in another place it is written he shall sit alone Vayikra 1346 outside the camp the meaning in both cases is that he was alone by himself all this leads to the fact that at the sentence of the flood while Yudhiheva Psat alone he did not join in that judgment and that is why the sentence was imposed as judgment without mercy 115 now because Noach was out of sight after the sentence was passed the world was destroyed and his temper was quiet it is written and Elohim remembered Noach for until now when he was destroying the world Noach was not remembered because he was out of sight 169 have learned a secret that the Holy One blessed be he is revealed and concealed he is revealed when presiding over the lower court of judgment which is the female principle called Rachel who stands from the chest of Zeir and downward and he is concealed when he is at the place from where comes all the blessings which is the state in MV1 which Zeir and mates with Lilia stands from the chest of Zeir and upward and from this mating all blessings come forth this is why all the words of men that are hidden from sight are blessed from above while all those exposed to view are under the influence of the court of judgment namely the female principle who is from the chest of Zeir and downward because this is the place that is revealed namely the revealed world in other words the light of Shesedim is revealed in her illumination by Chakma the one who is called the evil eye rules over her meaning that all judgment and cling to the place where the illumination of Chakma is revealed thus all is according to the supernal secrets of above 117 Rabbi Yusuf and said happy is the generation who has Rabbi Shimon among it his merit has brought us to these mountains so that we could hear such supreme discoveries he continued this man has come for the sole purpose of revealing these discoveries to us the Holy One blessed be he sent him to us and when they came to Rabbi Shimon and repeated all that they heard he said definitely all that he said is true. Section 15 the secrets of the sacrifices here the Zohar discusses the mysteries that surround the ritual of sacrifice we connect to the light through the sacrifices that were made during the time of the Holy Temple the secret of this ritual concerns the sacrifice that must occur within the self we must become the sacrifice spiritually speaking by giving up our own ego and evil inclination this section gives us the strength of character to approach the people in our lives with honesty. And to sacrifice our own egos by admitting any jealousies and insecurities in our relationships with them. 118 Rabbi Lazar was sitting one day before his father Rabbi Shimon and he asked him if the end of all flesh which is the other side enjoys himself with those sacrifices that Israel offered upon the altar. He answered that all derived their nourishment and were pleased both above and below. 119 Come and behold the priests, the Levites, and the children of Israel are the secret of the three columns right, left, and central and are called Adam and through the union of the holy desires that rise from them as main and female waters desire rises from the priests by their work from the Levites by their singing and from Israel by their attendance at the time of the offerings of the sacrifice. And when a sheep or a deer or any other animal is brought to be sacrificed, all sins and evil desires and intentions must be confessed over them and the sacrifice is called the beast. As it is now burdened with all the sins and evil intentions that were confessed over it 120 this is similar to the sacrifice of the scapegoat of which it is written and he shall confess over him all the iniquities of the children of Israel vi cross 1621 south here as well over every sacrifice there should be a confession of the sins because when the sacrifice is raised upon the altar and is not sent to the desert it bears a twofold burden each of which is raised to its own place the first is in the secret of Adam man which is also the secret of the three columns the latter is in the secret of the beast which is the secret of the illumination of the left column only as it is written man and beast you do save Hashem Tehillim 367 121 fried meal offerings and all other meal offerings arouse the Holy Spirit namely the aspect of man through the desire of the priests the singing of the Levites and the prayer of Israel who collectively are the secret of the three columns and from the smoke that the oil and the flour raises upon the altar all the prosecutors replenish themselves and are appeased once appeased they become powerless to pursue the indictment that has been delivered into their hands and they are considered to be the aspect of the beast so the meal offerings pertain to man and beast alike and both are drawn at the same time in other words both man and beast are drawn at the time of the sacrificial offering come and behold everything is arranged in accordance with the secret of faith both sides are replenished and sent above endlessly section 16 raising the hands during prayer the essence of this passage from the Zohar concerns the hands and their inherent nature of constantly attracting negative forces since the hands are the tools by which we carry out most of our actions in life the forces of darkness latch onto them in order to influence our deeds we can infuse our hands with the positive energy that dwells in the upper world so that they bring blessing and good fortune to all endeavors 122 Rabbi Shimon said I raise my hands on high to pray as he began to reveal the order of the emanations of the upper three Sfirat of Eric and which are called Keter the mind head Moshe of air and the concealed mind Moshe he began to to reveal how to rise up to the unrevealed head which is the secret of the endless world head soft blessed be he because this issue is an exalted and very secret matter he prayed so that the revelation of these secrets would be accepted before Hashem blessed be he when the supernal desire at the highest point above which is the secret of Keter of Eric is established upon the forever unknown and ungraspable desire which is the secret of the head of Attic called the unknown head the Keter of Eric becomes the most concealed head above and that head emanates all that he emanates and all that is unknown which is the mind Moshe of Eric Enpin and he illuminates all that he illuminates in a concealed manner which is the concealed mind Moshe of Eric Enpin as shall be further explained 123 the desire of the supernal thought which is the keter of Eric Enpin is called the supernal will after it has
consist of what is unknown by the mind Mojavir, what is not known by Heater, and what is unrevealed in the concealed mind. Thus, the illumination of the thought that is not known, which is the unknown head, hits upon the veil's illumination, and they shine together. And from them, nine chambers are made in the unknown head. One hundred and twenty-five. These chambers are not lights, as are the nine lights of Eric and Ben in their original location, and they are neither Rishat nor Neshamat, and nobody can understand what. They are because the light of the Ein Sof, blessed be he, shines upon the unknown head. The nine palaces therein are as the Ein Sof, which no mind can grasp, as shall be explained. The desire of all nine lights of the three heads of Eric and are standing in the thought, namely in their location in Eric and which is called the thought, and is also considered one of them. The thought of Eric and is counted as one of these nine lights, and although the lights are located in the unknown head, it Unknown head is not of their aspect at all. The desire of all is to pursue the nine chambers in which they are located within the unknown head, while the nine lights are located in the thought which is Eric Enpin. Nevertheless, the chambers are not attained and not known to the nine lights because they are not established as either an aspect of desire or as an aspect of supernal thought which is Eric Enpin. They grasp and do not grasp that all the secrets of faith are based upon these nine chambers, and all of these lights come from the secret of the supernal thought which is Eric Enpin, and all of the nine chambers originate from IT and all are called the Ein Sof because the lights reach and do not reach. There is no desire nor thought at this point. 126 When unknown thought shines from its source, namely from the mind Moshe Vera, it is enclosed and covered by mind, it shines upon whom she shines, and they enter each other until they are as one. 127 Returning to the secret. Of the sacrifice when it is raised on the altar unification such as those of the three heads of Eric Enpin in the unknown head and by in the head of Eric Enpin are done as has been previously explained all are enmeshed within one another and shine one upon the other now all the stages are in the secret of the ascending and when it ascends to the unknown head thought which is Eric Enpin is crowned by the Ein Sof that is the light of Ein Sof shines upon the illumination of the nine chambers of the unknown head as it is said the illumination of the supernal thought which is Eric Enpin shines from the nine chambers and is called Ein Sof and from Ein Sof comes Eric Enpin it is established and shines upon whom it shines all is based upon this on the drawing of the light of Ein Sof by Eric Enpin to the worlds as has been explained happy are the righteous who raise up the female waters and unify the aforementioned exalted combinations in this world and the world to come as they inherit both worlds 128 come and behold this end of all flesh means that the attachment takes place in joy above in Bina and in Eric Enpin the same applies below to Zeir Enpin the female principle and the lower worlds and the attachment of every lower stage to every upper one occurs in happiness and in a desire to share fulfillment with all above and below even to the end of all flesh and Ima which is the Shechanah dwells properly upon Yisrael 129 come and behold every first day of the month when the moon renews herself or in other words the female principle renews herself by mating with Zeir Enpin then the end of all flesh is given an extra portion which is the scapegoat of the new moon which is added to the regular sacrifices thus he is occupied by it and uses his portion so the new moon scapegoat renews the illumination of the left side from which the end of all flesh is replenished hence the right side of Israel remains for them alone so that it can unify with its king. This is why they offer the scapegoat, also called Harry Heb Seir, because it belongs to the part of Esau who is described as being Harry, as it is written, Esau, my brother, is a Harry man. Bereshit 2711. Thus, the end of all flesh replenishes from his part of Esav, which is the left side, while Israel replenishes from its side, which is the right. Thus, it is written, For Yah has chosen Yaakov to himself and Israel for his treasure. Tehillim 1354 130. Come and behold. The sole desire of this end of all flesh is flesh alone. All that is done with the flesh in any instance is only for his sake. That is why he is called the end of all flesh. And when he rules, he rules over the body, which is the flesh, but not over the soul. The soul returns to its place while the body, namely the flesh, is given over to this place, namely the end of all flesh. It is the same with the offering as the desire goes to one place and the flesh to another. 131. A person who is. Righteous is himself a sacrifice given for atonement because he sacrifices his own desire overcoming his will but a person who is not righteous is not accepted as a sacrifice because he is blemished as it is written they shall not be accepted for you. Vayikra 2225 So the righteous alone atone for the world and are accepted as sacrifices in this world come and behold and Hashem said to note the end of all flesh is come before me namely the other side and it came to receive permission to darken the faces of humankind so that is why I will destroy them with the earth. 132 come and behold it is written and Noach was 600 years old. Bereshit 76 and he asked why does the verse count the years of Noach and he answered if Noach was not 600 years old he would not have entered the ark and become united with it because he became completed in 600 years he became united with the ark 133 from the day that the sins of the people were completed from the time they were deserving. Of receiving their punishment, the Holy One, blessed be he still waited for them. He waited until Noach completed his six hundred years and perfected himself as a righteous man. Only then did Noach enter the ark, and everything below is as above. In other words, everything was done by divine inspiration from the upper Yizid and Malchut. That is why it is written, and Noach was six hundred years old, and not approximately six hundred. For as we have said, he had to be exactly six hundred years old to complete the sphere of Yizid. Section 17 And I do bring the flood of waters. No matter how far one may fall spiritually, the light of the Creator is always present the moment we decide to rise above our negativity. This awareness, together with the positive influences radiating from the text, is the way we can begin our ascent. 134 And he continued quoting the verse, And I shall myself bring the flood of waters. Bear sheet 617 He asked, Why does the verse say myself after already saying, and I, and he answered it. Words I and myself are the same, but come and behold, wherever it is written, I a body has been made for the soul. This means that I is the female principle, which is the aspect of the body for Zeir Enpin. Conversely, Zeir Enpin is considered to be her soul, and it certainly does receive from above from Zeir Enpin. That is why the word I is hinted with the sign of the covenant, the circumcision with the letter Bablet, and which is Yezid of Zeir Enpin, as it is written, I my covenant is with you. Bear sheet 174 for the female principle receives from the covenant of Zeir Enpin. I means that it is ready to be revealed and is achievable. I means that it is a throne of what is above. I means that I am the one who shall seek revenge for generations upon generations. But the words and I have Bi appearing in this passage include the letter Bab and refer to the union of the male and female. The Bab of Bi refers to the male who is Zeir Enpin, and the female principle is mentioned. Alone without Zeir Enpin at the time when she is ready to pass judgment as it is written myself shall bring the flood of waters upon the land 135 he asked if it has been already stated shall bring the flood do we not understand that he refers to water if so why is it then necessary to mention flood of waters and he answered flood implies the presence of the angel of death even though it was only water the angel of destruction went in the world to destroy it with this water 136. He continued by saying we have learned that the words I am Hashem shows that I am faithful to the recompense of the righteous and the punishment of the wicked so here in this verse I means to promise to reward and repay the righteous well in the world to come likewise it describes the threat to the wicked who will be punished in the world to come with the term I 137 as we previously explained the words to destroy all flesh refer to the angel of destruction this is why it is also written and he will not allow the angel of destruction to come into your house to smite you Shemot 1223 this means that he does not give him permission to destroy to destroy all flesh that alludes to the angel of destruction as is hinted in the verse the end of all flesh is come before me meaning that it came before him to ask permission to destroy the time the holy one blessed be he had waited for them to repent had passed that is no had reached 600 years of age and it was possible to reward him as the verse promises to reward the righteous the time had also arrived for the punishment of the wicked that is why Hashem gave permission to the angel of destruction to destroy all flesh he said this is what we learned in the name of Rabbi Yitzhak who told us all this section 18 I said I shall not see how many dark forces attempt to sway us from our spiritual path tempting our eyes with the illusions of physical reality
Along a path that leads to Gehenom followed the path to the Garden of Eden. These are the ones who are called residents of the world Lichadal, which means cessation Yeshaya 3811. And he asked, Why is it not written inhabitants of the world have shield? He answered, Because they are not like the mole have shield, a creature who endures life blindly, laboriously storing and hiding provisions, knowing not for whom they are the residents of cessation, as in cease have shield from man whose breath is. In his nostrils, Yeshaya 222, because the Hebrew word Chadal means to avoid, they are called the residents of cessation. They avoided walking the path of Gehenom and disciplined themselves to walk along the path leading to the Garden of Eden. 141. Another explanation is that residents of cessation refers to all those who repented and ceased performing the sins of the wicked because Adam repented before his master. He sits among others who also repented, ceased sinning, and are called residents of cessation. As it is written, I will know how frail have Chadal I am. Tehillim 395. And therefore Adam sits at the gate of the Garden of Eden and he is happy with the righteous who walk along the path and arrive at the Garden of Eden. 142. Come and behold, it is written, I said, I shall not see Yah. So he asked, Who can ever see Yah now? And he replied that the end of the verse reveals the intention of the words as it is written, Yah in the land of life. Come and behold, when the souls ascend and reach the place of the bundle of life they enjoy the illumination of the radiant mirror which shines and brings forth light from the most elevated place of all a soul not enclosed in this radiance could neither approach nor get close enough to see that light 143 and the secret of the matter is that as the soul is given garments to don so it can exist in this world which is the body so it is also given garments of supernal radiance these allow it to exist in the world to come and to see into the radiant mirror which is zeir and from that land of life the female principle of zeir and thus the problem that arose in the verse i said i shall not see i solved the intention is that by these two amendments one by the garment of the supernal radiance and two by the female principle of zeir and called the land of life the righteous people deserve to see into the radiant mirror which is the secret of yahweh Yudha in the land of life 144 come and behold moshe would not have been able to approach what he was looking at had he not been dressed in another covering as it is written and Moshe entered into the midst of the cloud and went up the mountain Shema 2418 and he covered himself with the cloud as a person wears a garment and then it is written Moshe came to the cloud where Elohim was Shema 2418 and Moshe was on the mountain 40 days and 40 nights Shema 2418 and was able to see what he saw 145 in the same way the souls of the righteous in the world of truth dress themselves in garments and act in accordance with that world so dress they are prepared to gaze into the light that shines in the land of life meaning that they cover themselves with the light of the female principle from which they are able to gaze into the light of the radiant mirror when Shizkiah who called Yaya in the land of life Yeshayah 3811 he was afraid that he might no longer be worthy of gazing on that light and writing that vision the stream that flows from Gan Eden blocked his vision and he did not beget any children and whoever does not indulge in the act of procreation blemishes the river that flows from Gan Eden which is Yezid of Zeir and this is indicated in the verse I shall behold Adam no more Yeshayah 3811 this refers to the first man as has already been explained Adam sits within the gates of Gan Eden and receives the souls of the righteous who arrived there Shizkiah feared that he was not worthy of seeing Adam at those gates. 146 and what was the reason for all this namely why did Shizkiah who feared this because the prophet had told him for you shall die in this world and not live Yeshayah 3811 in the world of truth for upon death he who has not begotten any children in this world is expelled from all that is mentioned above and cannot stay to gaze upon that shining light if this was the case with Shizkiah who was a pure righteous man so much more for those who do not have ancestral merit to support them and have even since before their master 147 this garment previously mentioned has already been discussed by our friends there is a robe of the sages that they wear in the world of truth happy are the righteous with their inheritance as the holy one blessed be he has put aside many blessings and delights for them in the world of truth it has been written of them i has not seen besides you elohim what you shall do for him that waits for you yeshayah 643 section 19 and i a flood of waters the spiritual insight conveyed here by the zohar concerns an individual who commits a terrible deed but still retains a spark of shame a degree of embarrassment or a slight awareness of the wrongfulness of his actions there is still hope for this person and the path of repentance remains open to him but those who commit wanton acts of evil without any remorse for their actions are considered to be past the point of no return this section helps us maintain awareness of what constitutes positive and negative spiritual actions 148 and I myself shall bring a flood of waters upon the earth Rabbi Yehuda opened the discussion with the verse these are the waters of strife wherein the children of Israel strove with Hashem and he was sanctified in them Bimidbar 2013 and he asked this is not the only place where the children of Israel strove with Hashem why does the text say waters of strife here but not at any other place and he replied these waters in particular are the waters of strife for they gave strength and bravery to the prosecutor there are sweet and bitter waters which are the secrets of holiness and its opposite of the right column and there are pure and muddy waters which are the secrets of holiness and its opposite of the left column and there are waters of peace and of strife which are the secrets of the holiness and its opposite of the central column that is why it is written these are the waters of strife wherein the children of Israel strove with Hashem this shows that the waters refers to the opposite side of the central column as they drew upon themselves that which they should not have drawn namely the opposite side called the waters of strife and they were defiled by them and this is why it is written and he was sanctified in them 149 Rabbi Shishkiah asked if it is so then why is it written and he was sanctified it should have been written and they were sanctified in the plural referring to the children of Israel and he replied that there is a hidden meaning to the words he was sanctified they indicate that something that should not be damaged is damaged it is as if the moon which is the female principle has been damaged so the word sanctified is not mentioned here for praise which accounts for the discretion expressed in the scriptures and Rabbi Yehuda concluded that and I myself shall bring a flood of waters means that he shall send the angel of destruction upon them just as they defiled themselves with him as we have stated previously 150 Rabbi Yossi said woe to the wicked who do not want to repent of their sins before the Holy One blessed be he while they are still in this world because when a person repents and feels sorry for his sins then the Holy One blessed be he forgives him but those who cling to their sins and refuse to repent will eventually fall into Gehenom and never be brought up again 151 come and behold because the generation of Noach was stubborn and bold enough to sin openly the Holy One blessed be he brought judgment upon them Rabbi Yitzhak said that if a person sins and he does so secretly then the Holy One blessed be he is merciful if he repents he is pardoned and forgiven but if he does not repent his sins he reveals them for all to see how do we know this we learn this from the way in which the faithless wife who sins secretly is treated and from how the Holy One blessed be he reveals her sin out in the open with the Cursing waters 152 in the same manner the wicked namely the generation of the deluge were openly destroyed and wiped from the face of the earth and how were they wiped out the scalding waters spurted up from the abyss skinning them alive as skin was torn from flesh they were left only with their bones and then the bones came asunder as it is written and they were wiped from the face of the earth Bear sheet 723 Rabbi Yitzhak said and they were wiped out what is meant by the expression wiped out it is similar to let them be blotted out from the book of living Tehillim 6929 we learn from this that they shall not participate in the resurrection and will not rise in the day of judgment section 20 and I will establish my covenant the vital importance of the covenant between man and God can remain in our consciousness through the spiritual forces released by the letters of the section this covenant is founded primarily upon the greatest Power that humanity was given for revealing spiritual light into this world and into our own lives that is sexual relations between husband and wife the Kabbalists teach us that because this action has the most potential and influence for revealing light it is given the most attention by the evil inclination and the negative forces that dwell in our midst 153 but with you will I establish my covenant bear sheet 618 Rabbi Lazar said that from this we learn that the establishment of the covenant above is equivalent to the establishment of that below this is concluded from the term with you Rabbi Lazar continued to say that from this we learn that when there are righteous in the world the worlds
Covenant means that you shall be my covenant in the world and after that and you shall come into the ark because had he not been righteous he would not have entered the ark as only a righteous man may be connected with the ark that is why it is written you shall come into the ark after it has been stated that but with you will I establish my covenant 156 Rabbi Lazar said that as long as the people hold on to the covenant no nation nor tongue in the world can harm them and because Noach kept and protected the covenant the Holy One blessed be he protected him but the rest of his generation did not observe the covenant so the Holy One blessed be he removed them from the world and it has been said that in the same way that they sinned they were also erased from the world section 21 and he repaired the altar of Hashem that was ruined the covenant between mankind and God connects to the sphere of Yezid which correlates to the Reproductive organs of man there is also a vital spiritual link to the circumcision of a newborn male child the underlying lesson of this section is the Kabbalistic doctrine that all war natural disasters famine slaughter and massacre can be traced to destructive spiritual forces arising from humanity's negative sexual acts negative sexual acts are defined as those that are not for the purpose of procreation or for the bringing of light to the world sexual relations between man and wife mirror the metaphysical forces at work in the upper worlds the male corresponds to the realm of Yezid and the woman to the world of Malchud whenever any kind of positive light and fulfillment reaches our lives it is a direct result of the enjoining of Yezid and Malchud sexual relations accomplish this mating of the two upper worlds however negative forces constantly try to sever this connection these negative forces are so cunning and clever they have deceived us into believing they do not even exist through our own meditation and desire to share the power of these words of the Zohar can awaken a genuine understanding of the role sexual relations play in the revelation of light into the world. 157 Rabbi Yehuda was sitting before Rabbi Shimon and both were studying the text in which it is written and he repaired the altar of Hashem that was broken down. I Melashim 1831 is the meaning of the term repaired in this verse. Come and behold in the days of Eliyahu all Israel. Left the Holy One blessed be he and in so doing left their Holy Covenant and when Eliyahu came and saw that the sons of Israel had left the Holy Covenant and therefore it had been taken away from them he amended it and brought it back to its place that is he amended Yezid making it worthy of mating with Malchut and this is considered to be the repair of the altar which is Malchut as shall be further explained 158 because he brought it back to its place namely because he repaired Yezid and Brought it back to Malchut, all was healed. This is why it is written, and he repaired the altar of Hashem that was broken. Dash a reference to the covenant that had been forsaken. It is therefore written, and Eliyahu took twelve stones according to the number of the tribes of the sons of Yaakov. I Melashim 1831, which alludes to the repair of the altar of Hashem, the amendment of the damage, and the healing of the altar. 159, to which the word of Hashem came and said, Yisrael shall be your name. I Melashim 1831, he asked, What is the reason for mentioning the name Yisrael upon the altar? And he answered, Assuredly, Yisrael shall be your name. Signifies the amendment to raise her up, namely to raise Malchut to the supernal Abba and Ima, and to return the holy covenant to its place. It signifies that Yisrael of Zeir and Pen could unite again with Malchut, for there can be no union between Zeir and Pen and Malchut unless they return to their places between Abba and Ima. That is why it is written for the Children of Israel have forsaken your covenant and have therefore ruined your altars. I Melashim 1910, which is Malchut, and by the secret of the amendment of the covenant, she shall be rebuilt again. 160. Come and behold, as long as Israel respects the holy covenant, the worlds above and below are permitted to exist. But when they disregard the covenant, the worlds above and below cannot exist. As it is written, if my covenant be not day and night, it were as if I had not appointed it. Ordinances of heaven and earth. Here may 3,325. This is why it is written, and he repaired the altar of Hashem that was broken down. He asked if this is considered to be healing, and he answered yes, most certainly, because he maintains the place upon which faith is dependent. In other words, he observes the covenant which is Yisrael and maintains the place on which Malchut that is called faith depends. 161. Come and behold, the same applies to Pinchas, who was zealous because of what Zimri had. Done by his action, he reinstated the covenant and returned it to its proper place. That is why it is written, Behold, I give to him my covenant of peace. Be midbar 2512. Can one really accept the idea that Pinches was the reason for the peace? And upon what is this controversy between Pinches and the covenant based that here in the word peace everything was connected to its right place? Meaning, Behold, I give to him my covenant of peace. But what is it that is given? What is the covenant peace? Which means supernal mating is given so that the covenant can be connected to its proper place, which is Malchut. That is why it is written, I give to him my covenant of peace. And what is peace? It is the place with which to connect it is a mating with Malchut referred to by the term peace. Malchut that was disconnected from him from Yisrael as a result of the sins of Israel was attached to it by Pinches. He was the person who returned the covenant to its place for all time and he shall have it. And the covenant of an everlasting priest who shall belong to his seed after him because he was zealous for his Elohim. Bimidbar 2512 162 Rabbi Shimon said that there is nothing in the world which so provokes the zealousness of the Holy One. Blessed be he as the sin of disregarding the covenant as it is written a sword that shall execute the vengeance of the covenant. Vayikra 2625 Come and behold the sin of the generation of the flood was not completed until they sinned by corrupting their ways on earth and even though they were violent with each other as it is written and the earth was filled with violence. Bereshit 411 and for the earth is filled with violence through them. Bereshit 413 I shall destroy them was because of the sin of letting semen spill in vain that is their sentence was not completed until the covenant was blemished. The earth was also corrupt before the Elohim and I shall destroy them was measure for measure 163 and there are those who say that their measure of guilt was not completed when they sinned with violence and were cruel with each other for by this they were wicked toward heaven and to other people come and behold there are many ministers above who are appointed to the voices of those who declare the sentences of their friends to the heavens for what has been done to them and for the sin it is written the earth is filled with violence through them this means that each and every one passed judgment on his friend before the heavens that is why it is said i will destroy them with the earth section 22 come you and all your house the home is a magnet for both positive and negative spiritual forces negative people who visit our homes can instill harmful energy and the section gives us the protection against any such forces 164 and hashem said to noach come you and all your house rabbi shimon asked why does the term elohim appear in all the verses of the text while here the name Hashem Yud Yudhe is mentioned what is different here that Yudhe Vavhe which is the supernal name of mercy was mentioned this hints at the secret we have already learned that it is not proper for a woman to invite a guest into her house without the permission of her husband 165 it was the same when Noach was asked to enter the ark which is Malchut and to unite with her it was not yet proper for him to enter until the husband of the ark gave him permission to do so. As it is written come you and all your house into the ark and this is why the name Yudhe Vavhe who is the husband of the ark is mentioned therefore Yudhe Vavhe Iseir and the ark is Malchut only after the husband gave permission did Noach enter and unite with the ark thus we have learned that a guest does not have permission to enter a house without the consent of the husband the owner of the house this is why after the mention of Yudhe Vavhe it is written and Noach went. In 166 come and behold what is written for you I have seen righteous before me in this generation Bereshit 71 from this we learn that a person should never accept a guest into his house if he suspects that he might be wicked and he should accept him only if he considers him to be righteous and is not at all suspicious of him that is why it is written come you and all your house into the ark why because you I have seen righteous before me in this generation 167 and we have also learned that if the husband gives permission to the guest alone but not to his companions the guest should not bring them into the house in the verse come you and all your house into the ark permission was given to all of Noach's companions to enter the ark and from this passage we learn a secret concerning proper manners and ways of conduct section 23 the earth and the fullness thereof is Hashem's sexual relations that are not founded upon spiritual Principles cause a drying up of the connection between Malchut and Yezid like a river whose waters have ceased to flow this withdrawal of light manifests as all forms of natural and man-made turmoil 168 Rabbi Yehuda quoted for David Assam the earth
It written full and not filled because assuredly she is full of goodness meaning that she is filled by the sun the moon which is the Shechinah is filled and completed by the righteous she is filled with all the goodness from above like a treasure box filled with the riches of the world that is to what the verse the earth and the fullness thereof is Hashem's refers but the words the world and they that dwell in it were said in reference to countries other than the land of Israel. 170 Another explanation of the verse the earth and the fullness thereof is Hashem's is that these words refer to the upper holy land namely the female principle that the holy one blessed be he desires and the term fullness refers to the souls of the righteous which fill the female principle with the power of the pillar that is Yezid of Zeir and upon which the whole world stands in other words all that exists in the world which is the female principle is received from Yezid of Zeir and and this is why the world is considered to stand upon IT 171. If you wonder, does the world stand upon one pillar? Come and behold in the verse, for he has founded it upon the seas. Tehillim 242. The words, for he refer to the Holy One, blessed be he. The meaning of this is similar to that of the words, it is he who made us. Tehillim 1003. And that of, for he looks to the end of the earth. Eo 2824. 172. The words, for he has founded it upon the seas and established it upon the floods, refer to the seven pillars upon which the female principle is founded and by which she is filled. These are the seven Sfirot, Chesed, Burit, Tiferet, Netzach, Hadiyazid, and Malchud of Zeir. And so Rabbi Yehuda asked, How is she filled by them? And he answered, When the righteous multiply in the world, the land which is the female principle produces fruit and is filled with all 173. But the verse says that when the wicked multiply in the world, the water cease from the sea and the river is drained dry. Eo 1411, the place where the water cease from the sea is the holy land as previously mentioned and the female principle is watered by the supernal stream the water cease while the river is drained dry refers to the pillar upon which she is founded namely Yezid which is now arid drained dry the river is drained dry as the equivalent of the righteous parish the righteous being Yezid which is called righteous section 24 the sinners are destroyed from the world when negative forces are abundant as a result of the collective sins of mankind they have the power to harm even innocent people who unwittingly cross their paths the Zohar provides us with protection as we meditate upon its words our intent to share this protection with others brightens the life for entire world 174 Rabbi Yehuda continued at the time that the wicked are destroyed from the world the holy one blessed be he watches the world but cannot find anyone to protect the man you might ask if Noach was there to protect his generation during the great flood and was able to bring forth offspring why did he not protect his generation the verse reads for you have I seen righteous before me in this generation in this generation is a precise term from which we may learn that in another generation he would not have been considered righteous and for this reason his merit was not enough to protect the generation of the flood 175 Rabbi Yossi said that the words in this generation are a tribute to Noach who lived in such a wicked generation and nevertheless remained a righteous and just man not only in his generation is he considered righteous but even in the generation of Moshe would he have been so considered but he was not able to protect the world because there were not even 10 righteous people in it this was the case as described in the destruction of SDOM perhaps 10 shall be found there Beersheet 1832 as not even 10 were found SDOM was destroyed the same happened here ten righteous people were not to be found only Noach's three sons and their wives because they did not add up to ten they could not protect their generation 176 Rabbi Lazar asked his father Rabbi Shimon we have learned that when the world is full of the sins of mankind and judgment is pronounced woe to the righteous one who is found in the world for he is the first to be punished for the sins of the wicked how did Noach escape the flood without being punished for the sins of his generation and Rabbi Shimon answered it is said that because the holy one blessed be he wanted to bring from Noach offspring into the world he spared him not only that but judgment could not be applied to him because he was covered in the ark and hidden from view 177 come and behold it is written seek righteousness seek humility maybe you shall be hidden on the day of Hashem's anger Tzephenia 23 Noach did seek righteousness he entered the ark and was hidden there on the day of Hashem's anger and that is why judgment could neither be applied to nor hurt him 178 here we find a hint of the secret of the holy supernal letters reserved for the holy supernal men to learn and know the reverse order of the 22 Hebrew letters can bring the destruction of the wicked and this is why it is written they were erased from the earth Beersheet 723 and come you and all your house into the ark section 25 the difference between Moshe and other people in the world placing others ahead of ourselves is counter to the foundations of human nature even a righteous soul such as Noah did not possess a complete and selfless love for all mankind the only person willing to sacrifice himself for all humanity was Moses though Noah did all that God asked of him pertaining to the building of the ark Noah did not argue with God on behalf of the people of his generation who were destined to perish in the flood the people of Moses' generation were stiff-necked and unappreciative lot who knew no boundaries when it came to brazen intolerant and negative behavior but Moses still fought with God to spare his fellow man Moses offered his own life in place of theirs despite their constant betrayal and insurgency we must begin the near impossible task of truly considering others before ourselves the spiritual attributes that Moses possessed are available through the influences of the Hebrew letters that spell out this. Story 179 Rabbi Yitzhak analyzed the words he who caused his glorious arm to go at the right hand of Moshe that divided the water before them to make himself an everlasting name Yeshayah 6312 he said that his glorious arm is the merit of Abraham who is the embodiment of Chesed and who is to the right side of the Tiferet of Moshe in other words Moshe is the secret of Tiferet and Chesed is to his right so the term arm indicates the right arm of the Tiferet of Moshe and therefore that Divided the water before them indicates that the merit of Abraham who is Jesus divides the water and for what reason to make himself an everlasting name 180 come and behold what is the difference between Moshe and other human beings when the Holy One blessed be he said to Moshe now therefore let me alone and I will make you a great nation Shema 3210 Moshe immediately asked shall I abandon Israel forget their punishment and not plead for mercy for them because of my welfare the world now shall say that I have killed the nation of Israel and that I did the same as Noach had done before me 181 Noach did not plead for mercy on behalf of the world and they all perished because the Holy One blessed be he had told him that he and his children would be saved by the ark as the verses state and I myself shall bring the flood water and I shall destroy all existence that I have made from upon the face of the ground Beersheet 74 and as for me behold I establish my covenant and come you into the ark because Noach did not plead for them the flood waters are named after him as it is written for this is as the waters of Noach to me Yeshayah 549 182 Moshe said now all the people shall say that I have killed them because Hashem has told me that he shall make me a great nation now it is best for me to die and not have the nation of Israel destroyed then immediately Moshe besought Hashem his Elohim and said Hashem why does your wrath burn against your people Shema 3211 he prayed for mercy and indeed mercy for the world was aroused 183 Rabbi Yitzhak continued at first when he pleaded for mercy for them what did he say he said Hashem why does your wrath burn against your people Ibid? and he asked why did Moshe ask why they sinned by idol worshipping for it is written they have made them a molten calf and have worshipped it Ibid. nevertheless Moshe asked why and he answered that we have already learned that when a person is trying to a piece of friend who has been offended by another he should not magnify but should rather minimize the offense in the eyes of the offended later he should maximize it in the eyes of the offender so this is why Moshe asked before the Holy One blessed be he why does your wrath burn against your people he minimized the sin but afterward magnified it to the people of Israel saying you have sinned a great sin of it 3184 he did not relent but kept pleading with the Holy One blessed be he for mercy to the point of offering his own life for the sake of the people of Israel as it is written and if not blot me I pray you out of your book which you have written of it 32 and then the Holy One blessed be he forgave them as it is written and Hashem relented of the evil of it 14 but Noach did not act as did Moshe he only pleaded to be saved and left the world to its fate 185 so whenever judgment is upon the world the Holy Spirit says alas there is no one to be found like Moshe as it is written and he remembered the days of Moshe where is he who brought them up out of the sea Yeshayah 6311 the verse tells us Hashem said to Moshe
Merit of the patriarchs, but Moshe, unlike Moshe, had no other person on whose merit he could depend. 188 Rabbi Yitzhak said that even though this was the case when the Holy One blessed be, he said to him, And I will establish my covenant with you, he should have asked for mercy for them as well, and he should have sacrificed the offering he sacrificed after the flood before it happened. Maybe that would have calmed the judgment of wrath that hung over the world. 189 Rabbi Yehuda asked what? Should Moshe have done for the wicked of the world, provoked the Holy One blessed be, he should he have offered a sacrifice on their behalf, he was certainly afraid for himself that he should not be entangled with them in death, he had seen their wicked deeds and how they had provoked the Holy One blessed be, he day in and day out. 190 Rabbi Yitzhak said, As long as the wicked multiply in the world, when a righteous person is found among them, he is punished first as it is written, and from my Sanctuary, you should commence Yashiskel 196, and we have learned to read this not as Mimakdashi from my sanctuary, but rather as Mimakdashi from my holy ones. And this being the case, how did the holy one bless be? He saved Noshu, who was righteous among the wicked, and he answered, He was saved so that he could bring further generations into the world, for he was truly righteous and fit to beget proper children. 191, not only that, but he warned them every day, but they did not pay heed, and it. Verse yet, if you warn the wicked, you have delivered your soul. Yashiskel 319 is applied to him from this. We learn that whoever warns the wicked, even if the wicked do not heed him, that person saves himself while the wicked are punished according to their sins. He asked, How far should he go in warning them? And he answered, Until he hits them, this issue has already been explained by our friends. 192 Rabbi Yossi was staying with Rabbi Shimon one day, he asked him, What was the motive of the holy? One blessed be he in extirpating all the animals of the field and the birds of the air along with the wicked men sent but what wrong had the animals birds and other creatures committed Rabbi Shimon answered the reason is given in the words for all flesh had corrupted their way upon the earth. Bear sheet 612 this means that all living creatures corrupted their way that is they mated with other species 193 come and behold the wicked of the world caused all the creatures to mate with species not their own they thereby sought to destroy the work of creation by mixing and altering species they caused all the creatures to pervert their ways on earth as they themselves had done the holy one blessed be he said to them as you seek to destroy my work of creation I shall fully grant your wish and every living substance that I have made I will remove from the face of the earth I shall bring the world back to water as in the beginning cover it with water and then make other living. Beings who are fit to exist in the world section 26 and note went into the ark here the Zohar reveals the concept of evil eye evil eye pertains to the negative glances and resentful looks that we receive from those who may harbor envious feelings the Kabbalist attributes the majority of common ailments and misfortunes to evil eye when we cast the evil eye towards others we create an opening within ourselves that attracts even more negative glances we ourselves become more vulnerable to its effects and a vicious circle is created this action brings equal harm to both the bearer of evil eye and to the recipient 194 and note went in and his sons and his wife and his sons wives with him bear sheet 77 rabbi she opened the discussion with the verse can anyone hide himself in secret places that I shall not see him says Hashem Yirmeyah 2324 he said how blind and obtuse are the people who neither seek nor know the honor of their master of whom it is written, Do not I fill heaven and earth? Yermea 2324. How do the people expect to hide from their sins? They ask, Who sees us and who knows us? Yeshea 2415. And also they toil in the dark. Yeshea 2415. Where can they hide from him? 195. This is similar to the story in which a king built a palace with hidden fortified subterranean caves, and it came to pass that the inhabitants of the palace revolted against the king, so he surrounded them with his troops. And what did they do? They hid themselves inside the fortified hiding places. The king asked, As I made these caves, how can you expect to hide from me in them? This is why it says, Can anyone hide himself in secret places that I shall not see him? Says Hashem Yermea 2324. It was I who made these fortified caves, it was I who made light and darkness. How can you hide from me? 196. Come and behold, when a person sins before his master and sins further by hiding himself and making himself believe that nobody is watching. Him then the Holy One blessed be he punishes him openly but when that person purifies himself and repents then the Holy One blessed be he seeks to hide him so that he should not be seen on the day of the wrath of Hashem for certainly every person should hide himself so as not to be seen by the angel of destruction when the latter dwells in the world he should not see him as he is authorized to destroy all those whom he sees 197 Rabbi Shimon said that every person who has the evil eye of jealousy has upon him the angel of destruction who is called the destroyer of the world therefore all should beware of such a person and not come close to him by avoiding him one shall be protected it is forbidden to openly approach such a person exposing ourselves to his evil eye if we must beware a person with the evil eye so much more must we beware the angel of death and hide ourselves on the day of the wrath of Hashem 198 of Bilam it is written so says the man whose eye is closed. The Midbar 243 meaning that he had an evil eye and wherever he looked he threw the spirit of destruction on it that is why he wanted to gaze on Yisrael so that he could destroy all that his eye could see thus it is written and Bilam lifted up his eyes of it too meaning he raised one eye and lowered the other attempting to gaze on Yisrael with the evil eye 199 come and behold it is written and he saw Yisrael dwelling tribe by tribe of it and he also saw that the Sheshanah hovered and brooded over them because she was made whole by the twelve tribes beneath her the eye of Bilam could not have power over them he said how can I overcome them as the supernal holy spirit namely Bani is hovering over them and protecting them with her wings as it is written he lay down like a lion who shall rouse him up of nine that is who shall raise him the supernal holy spirit that it should stop protecting them so that they might be revealed to the eye which would then rule them two hundred therefore the Holy One blessed be he wanted to protect Noach by hiding him out of sight so that the impure spirit could not rule him and destroy him as has already been explained the words and Noach went in apply to what has previously been said that he entered the ark to be hidden from sight the words because of the waters of the flood indicate that the waters actually pushed him into the ark meaning that he saw the waters of the flood and was afraid as a result he went into the ark Rabbi Yussi added that Noach saw the angel of death arrive with the waters of the flood and that is why he entered the ark 201 and he protected himself by staying in the ark for 12 months why 12 months on this point Rabbi Yitzhak and Rabbi Yehuda have different opinions one says that the 12 months are the period of the sentence of the wicked in Gehenom the other says that the purpose of the 12 months was to enable Noach the righteous to complete 12 stages of purification so that he and all the others could emerge from the ark because each stage requires one month for completion they were delayed for twelve months two hundred and two Rabbi Yehuda said in Gehenom the wicked are punished with water for six months and with fire for six months so why during the flood were they punished only by water for twelve months six months should have been enough Rabbi Yussi told him that they were sentenced to both punishments of Gehenom water and fire they were punished by water and the water that fell upon them from above was cold as snow and they were also punished by fire because the water that sprouted from the deep was scalding thus they were punished for twelve months receiving the full sentence of Gehenom six by water and six by fire this continued until they were completely removed from the face of the world during this time Noach was hidden in the ark as a result the angel of destruction did not approach him and the ark roamed upon the waters as it is written and they bore up the ark and it was lifted above the earth bear sheet 717 203 they were smitten for 40 days as it is written and the flood was 40 days upon the earth bear sheet 717 for the duration of the 12 months they were being erased as it is written and they were blotted out from the earth woe to those wicked people because they shall not rise from the dead and appear in the world on the day of judgment for they were blotted out from the earth as is described in the verse you have blotted out their name forever and ever Tehillim 916 so they shall not even be allowed to stand on the day of judgment which means that they shall not even be among those who shall rise and stand in full disgrace as is written in Daniel 122 section 27 and they bore up the ark every negative action we commit literally pushes away God's presence the Shechinah from our midst the further away we push this light the dimmer our reality becomes with each new level of darkness more chaos and Turmoil manifest
The world of Shechina returned to her place 206. Rabbi Yesa asked Rabbi Abba if it is so then why after the wicked who had lived in the land of Israel during the destruction of the Holy Temple were blotted out did the Shechina not return to her place Rabbi Abba answered him because after the destruction the righteous of the world did not remain in the Holy Land but left for Egypt as described in the book of Yermeo wherever they went in exile the Shechina followed and resided among them. If she did not leave them even in a strange land and certainly had the people stayed in Israel she would have returned to them after the destruction 207 so it is clear by now that the sins of the wicked caused the Shechina to depart one of those sins is the sin of one person who corrupts his way upon the earth as we have previously explained such a person shall not see the face of the Shechina nor shall he enter the palace of the king this is why it is written that they shall be blotted out from the earth blotted out completely 208 come and behold when the time comes and the holy one blessed be he resurrects the dead he shall make all the dead found in countries other than the land of Israel rise and stand in their bodies for one bone is left from a human body as it lies underground and it is like a lump of dough from which the holy one blessed be he shall rebuild the whole body 209 but he shall not restore their souls to them until they are in the land of Israel as it is stated behold I will open your graves and cause you to come up out of your graves my people and I will bring you into the land of Israel they will roll through underground passages and come to the land of Israel next it is written I will put my spirit in you and you shall live Yeshua 3712 to 14 only in the land of Israel will they receive their souls except those who have defiled themselves and the land namely the generation of the flood as for them it has been declared and they shall be blotted out of the earth out of the earth means precisely that they shall not rise during the resurrection of the dead and shall not come to the land of Israel to receive their souls although some of the ancient sages differ in their opinion claiming that they shall be resurrected what has been said stands for the term blotted out is similar to the expression let them be blotted out of the book of living Tehillim 6928 meaning that they shall never be resurrected 210 Rabbi Shimon said to him undoubtedly the generation of the flood will have no share in the world to come as it is written and they will be blotted out from the earth analogously it is written they shall inherit the land earth forever Yeshua 6021 and we learned that the word earth has the same meaning in both sentences nevertheless they shall rise and stand for the judgment as they are described and many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake some to everlasting life and some to reproaches and everlasting abhorrence Daniel 127 even though opinions differ on this matter everything is as our friends have explained section 28 and he destroyed every living substance destruction caused by our own negative actions not only affects our world but also harms the angels who watch over us in the upper worlds by directing the spiritual influences of the Zohar in their direction we can fortify these angelic forces 211 and he destroyed every living substance that was upon the face of the ground Rabbi Abba said that the verse indicates that the ministers who rule and govern upon the earth namely the angels who govern the peoples of the world were also destroyed this is the meaning of every living substance which was upon the face of the ground for when the Holy One blessed be he executes his judgment and punishes the people of the earth he starts with the supernal ministers who rule them and after they are Destroy continues with the people who abided beneath the shelter of their wings as it is written Hashem will punish the host of the heavens on high and then the kings of the earth upon the earth Yeshua 2421 212 but how were these ministers removed it was hard for him to understand this point because the power of death has no control over them how shall he remove them and he replied he drove them through burning fire as it is written for Hashem your Elohim is a devouring fire Zealous El 424 thus the living substance of above which includes the supernal ministers was driven through fire while those who were governed by them and resided below them namely the people of the world were erased by water this is why the verse begins and he erased all living substance and then continues man cattle and creeping things and the birds of the heaven they were destroyed from the earth and only Noach was left the word only signifies that nothing and nobody remained in the world except Noach and whoever was with him in the ark Rabbi Yossi said that the word only indicates that not even Noach's body was spared for he was smitten by a lion and became limp as was previously explained section 29 and Elohim remembered Noach the Zohar discloses a secret concerning the word remembered and its connection to having our prayers answered prayer alone will not yield a response if metaphorically speaking the creator cannot see the alarm lights flashing the coverings that block our alarm signals are negative entities called clipode which are brought into existence through our own negative deeds these coverings become more dense with each new negative action the words that tell of these spiritual secrets help our prayers pierce through all the dense layers of clipode so that our cries are heard above this is a mystery behind the word remember 213 and Elohim remembered Noach and every living thing and all the cattle that were with him in the ark. Bear sheet 61 Rabbi Shia quoted the verse of prudent man foresees evil and hides himself. Mishlei 223 saying that this verse refers to Noach who entered the ark and hid himself in it and he entered the ark only when the waters forced him to do so as was previously explained before he went into the ark he saw the angel of death walking among the people and encircling them because Noach saw the angel of death he entered the ark and hid thus it is. Written a prudent man sees evil and hides himself foresees evil refers to the angel of death from whom he hid as it is written from the waters of the flood or in other words from the angel of death whom he saw in the waters of the flood 214 Rabbi Yossi said that the verse of prudent man foresees evil and hides himself means as has been stated that when death rages throughout the world a wise man will hide and not appear in the open this prevents the angel of destruction from seeing. Him because when the angel of destruction gets permission to destroy he destroys everything in front of him and everyone who openly passes before him an illusion to this appears at the end of the verse that reads but the simple pass on and are punished Mishlei 223 referring to those who pass in front of him are seen by him and therefore punished another explanation is that pass on means that those who transgress the commandments of their master are therefore punished thus a prudent man foresees evil and hides himself refers to no while the simple pass on and are punished refers to the people of his generation 215 he hid himself in the ark and remained inside it all this time what does it say afterward it says and Elohim remembered Noach so Rabbi Shimon said come and behold while judgment is executed there is no remembrance but after the judgment has been executed and the wicked have been removed from the world and the word remember is mentioned this is because when judgment prevails in the world there is no supernal mating above and the angel of destruction rages throughout the world thus there is no positive remembrance as remembrance means mating 216 but after judgment is executed and completed and the wrath is appeased everything returns to its proper order namely the supernal mating commences and mercy is revealed in the world this is why the text reads and Elohim remembered Noach because the term remembrance which means mating applies to Noach as indicated by the words Noach was a righteous man and he is a throne for the supernal mating so that when the mating commenced Elohim remembered Noach 217 it is written you rule the proud swelling of the sea when the waves arise you still them Tehillim 8910 when the sea is stormy the waves mount on high and the waters of the deep go up and down the holy one blessed be he sends forth a thread of cheese from the right side pulls back his wheels and appeases its rage but there is nobody who can grasp him 218 Yonah fell into the sea and the fish swallowed him so he asked why did his soul not leave him at once and he answered because the Holy One blessed be he controls the swelling of the sea 219 the swelling of the sea is the thread from the left which causes the sea to rise and become elevated but had the other thread of mercy cheese had not arrived from the right it would have never been elevated for when that thread from the left goes down to the sea and is held by the sea the waves awaken and begin to roar for prey for the lack of chesedim they are not able to receive the abundance of chakma and nourish themselves therefore they remain hungry and roar for prey until the Holy One blessed be he restrains the waves holds them back and returns them to their place in other words he draws the thread of mercy and includes the chakma with chesedim and in so doing he restrains the waves and pulls them back to their place the chakma is Thus amended and can shine in fullness because the sea cannot rise by the light of Chakma from the left column before the thread of Chesed is drawn and enclosed. It 220 as it is written you rule the raging of the sea when their waves arise you still live praise them. One interpretation is that he does this by breaking and pulling them back to their place with the thread of Chesed. A different interpretation is that the meaning is literally you praise them that is the fact
To the king to Melashim 413 the king here refers to the Holy One, blessed be he who is called on that day the king, the holy king and the king of judgment. She replied, I dwell among my own people, Ibn meaning I do not want to be scrutinized on my own, therefore I dwell among my own people. He who puts himself in the middle of his own people does not draw attention to himself and is not judged for his wrongdoings. She thus said, Among my own people 224 come and behold during the time when the wrath of judgment was raging throughout the world, Noach was not mentioned, but after the judgment was completed, what does the scripture say? It says, And Elohim remembered Noach. Now was his name mentioned a different explanation of and Elohim remembered Noach is that it is similar to and I remembered my covenant Shemot 65, which means that he caused the supernal mating section 30 and Noach built an altar after the great flood. It Metaphysical lines of communication between the upper and lower worlds were destroyed and the flow of light into our world was cut off in order to re-establish a link. Noah rebuilt the metaphysical cables that run throughout the worlds. This concept is a mystery behind the altar that Noah built. 225 Rabbi Shizkiah was on his way from Kapakia to Lod when Rabbi Yesa ran into him. He addressed him saying, You surprise me, why are you walking alone since we have learned that a person should not go? On a journey alone, Rabbi Shizkiah replied, There is a young boy following and accompanying me. Rabbi Yesa said to him, This is what surprises me. Why are you accompanied by someone with whom you are not able to discuss the Torah? We have learned that whoever goes on a journey and does not delve into the matters of the Torah endangers his life. Rabbi Shizkiah replied, It is certainly so. 226 In the meantime, the young boy caught up with them. Rabbi Yesa asked him, My son, from where do you come in? Boy answered from the city of Lot I heard that this learned man was heading toward there so I offered to work for him to serve him and to walk with him. 227 Rabbi Yesa then asked him my son are you familiar with matters of the Torah and he answered yes I am my father used to teach me the section of the sacrifices and I also used to listen to what he taught my elder brother Rabbi Yesa then said to him my son speak to me. 228 the young boy started with the verse and Noach built an altar to Hashem and took up every clean beast and of every clean fowl and offered burnt offerings on the altar. Beersheet 820 he said and Noach built an altar indicates the altar on which Adam offered his sacrifice then he asked why did Noach offer a burnt offering as a burnt offering is only offered to atone for wrongful thoughts of the heart what was Noach's sin and he replied Noach thought to himself the Holy One blessed be he judged the world and sentenced it to destruction perhaps in being. Spirit I used up all the merit that I have and am now left with none so immediately Noach built an altar to Hashem 229 this was the altar on which Adam offered his sacrifices so the boy asked if it is so then why does it say that he built it it was Adam who built it and he replied it says this because the wicked of the world had caused the altar not to stand in its place the place where it can transfer abundance to the holy side when Noach came to offer his sacrifice on IT the verse stated and Noach built it because he brought it back to the place where abundance is directed toward the holy side 230 and offered burnt offerings Olah burnt offerings has a defective spelling without the letter Bob which would have indicated the plural form because he offered only one burnt offering it is written it is a burnt offering a fire offering for sweet savor to Hashem Vayikra 117 the boy said the burnt offering is a male and not a female as it is written he shall offer it a Male without blemish, Vayikra 13, therefore, why is the term Ishe fire offering spelled with the final hay indicating the feminine form of the word Ish fire without hay should have been used instead as this is a masculine form 231? And he explained that even though the burnt offering is male and is sacrificed and offered to its place, namely to Zir Enpin, who is a male aspect, the female principle should not be separated from Zeir Enpin as a result of the offering, thus it is offered to the female principle uniting Zeir Enpin and his female principle through the offering. The female principle rises up to Zeir Enpin and unites with him, even though we find the explanation that the fire offering is for the Ishim, the masculine plural form, and not for the rakings. We learn from the allusion to the female principle 232 notes should have sacrificed a burnt offering for the Holy One, blessed be he had established him in the place of the male so that he could enter the ark, the secret of. The female principle and be united with it he offered a burnt offering and not any other kind of sacrifice because he did not really sin he only thought that he had no merit left he sacrificed a burnt offering a fire offering Isha meaning the fire of Hay Isha this indicates that the left of Zeir Enpin which is called fire joined with the female principle called Hay the female principle comes from the left side which is called fire and when the female principle and the fire are joined she is called Isha the word Isha indicates the bond of love which is to the left where the fire the secret of the Hay holds her the fire raises her to Zeir Enpin binding them together as one this is why the verse reads it is a burnt offering a fire offering indicating the bond of a male and female with each other section 31 and Hashem smelled the savor of appeasement this complex section concerns the power of aroma to awaken and arouse great lights Various processes and contents that spiritual currents must travel are revealed here by the Zohar. A contemporary example can shed some light on the ideas that are being presented. A computer contains a processor which must make billions of computations per second in order to accomplish a task. In essence, the Zohar is describing the metaphysical computations taking place within the tense firot whenever the aroma of incense arouses the spiritual forces of light perusing the Aramaic words connects us. To these forces 233 and Hashem smelled the savor of appeasement. Bereshit 821 it is also written a fire offering a savor of appeasement. Vayikra 113 I have heard the term fire offering refers to an offering in which smoke and fire are conjoined since there is no smoke without fire. This is similar to the verse now Mount Sinai was altogether smoke because Hashem descended upon it in fire. Shemot 1918 come and behold fire comes from inside and is tenuous it must attach itself to. Something on the outside that is not so tenuous when fire and matter hold onto each other smoke rises why because fire affects whatever reacts to it an example is the nose which reacts to the smoke that issues from the fire 235 hence it is written they shall put incense in your nose to harm 3310 meaning that the judgments which are the fire and smoke issuing from the nose are sweetened by incense it sends the fire from the nose to its place namely to Yisrael, Saba and Tevuna because that is its point of origin because of the smell of the incense the nose contracts and reaches its innermost levels until all are united and everything returns to its point of origin and they all come closer to the thought which is Eric and then they are combined into one whole desire which is the savor of appeasement which appeases anger and restores peace 236 when the smoke is gathered it enters and folds itself onto the fire and the fire catches onto the smoke together they enter the innermost levels until the angel is appeased after they are united and anger is appeased a new mating occurs when the angel is satisfied and all three columns are bonded together it is called appeasement this refers to the second action mentioned in the previous paragraph which includes appeasement and satisfaction it combines the chesedim and universal rejoicing caused by the chakma as one it does so because the chesedim are completed by the light of chakma and chakma clothes the chesedim they are the radiance of the candles from the left side and the brightness of the faces from the right thus it is written and hashem smelled the savor of appeasement as one who smells and gathers all the sweetness to itself 237 rabbi yesa then approached the young boy and kissed him saying that he did not realize that the boy possessed all these precious goods and added that he would change his route in order to accompany the boy so they all proceeded together rabbi Shizkiah. Said we are walking along this route accompanied by the Shechina so it is corrected for us he then took hold of the young boy's hand and walked on and both rabbis requested that he tell them one of the scriptural expositions that his father has told him 238 the young boy started with the verse let him kiss me with the kisses of his mouth sure hasherim 12 this he continued is a supernal passion because when the fire was issued the desire came from the mouth and not from the nose. Because when one mouth is connected to someone else's for the purpose of a kiss fire emerges in the form of desire brightness of face the rejoicing of all and the union of delight 239 this is also why it is written for your love is better than wine of it is better than wine meaning it is better than the wine that brightens the face and causes the eyes to laugh bringing affection and brotherhood it is not from the wine that leads to drunkenness and that brings anger and rage causing. Darkening of the face and burning of the eyes 240 therefore
Lower world the female principle depends on the upper world Bina because the light that the female principle made shine in Bina is merited by the female principle as well. The fact that since the destruction of the holy temple there are no more blessings above in Bina or below in the female principle shows that the two depend on each other. 242 and Rabbi Yussi said that blessings cannot be found but curses do exist because sustenance is drawn from that side namely from lighting the upper. Candle with the smoke that rises from the lower one. Why? Because the nation of Israel does not reside in the land of Israel and does not worship properly. To worship properly is to light the candles, to light the upper candle with the lower one, and to draw down the blessings to be passed on to the worlds. This is why there are no blessings above or below. Therefore, the world does not exist as it should. 243. Then Rabbi Shishkiah asked, What is the meaning of the verse that reads, I will not continue to curse again the ground anymore for man's sake? Bereshit 821. Could it be that the Holy One, blessed be he, feels regret? Rabbi Yes answered that he had heard it was so from Rabbi Shimon who said that as long as the fire of above Abana spreads, then the smoke which is the judgment of below of the female principle intensifies the anger and destroys all. For when the fire from Abana comes forth, it does not stop until the punishment of the female principle which is smoke is completed. So. When the judgment from below the smoke ceases to spread because of the judgment from above from the force of the fire then the judgment is done and stopped and is not executed until destruction that is why it is written I will not continue meaning I will not continue to add to the fire in order to intensify the judgment down below which is the smoke 244 the young boy said I heard that the words curse is the land for your sake bear sheet 317 indicate that the land has been cursed because of the sin of Adam when the evil serpent received permission to rule over it and as he is a destructive force in the world through whom evil was slowly revealed until it brought the flood upon the earth and destroyed all the people of the world in other words the flood revealed evil and made it possible to separate the bad from the good but from the day when the holy one blessed be he smelled noche's sacrifice he separated the bad from the good and granted permission to the land to leave it Dominion of the serpent and depart from the defiled side for evil was separated from the land. Therefore, the children of Israel offered sacrifices to the Holy One. Blessed be he to brighten the face of the earth, which is Malchut. That is because Noach had not yet completed the correction. Israel still needed to offer sacrifices. Rabbi Shishkiah said that this is indeed so because that correction did not occur until Israel stood at Mount Sinai. Then the evil completely separated from the earth. It pollution ceased and there was freedom from the angel of death, as is known. 245. Rabbi Yesa said that the Holy One, blessed be he, diminished the moon, which was a female principle even before Adam sinned and the serpent took over. But because of Adam sinned, both the moon and the world that receives light from IT were cursed on the day that Noach offered his sacrifice. Only the land, which is a female principle, was freed from the curse, but the moon's light was still diminished only when there. Is an offering in the world and the nation of Israel lives in its land will moon's deficiency be corrected. This refers to the time of King Solomon and contradicts the words of the young boy who said that Noach's offering resulted in permission for the earth to leave the dominion of the serpent. He claimed that the curse had been cancelled, but the dominion of the serpent still prevailed. That is why the offerings of Israel are required in the holy temple. Rabbi Yesa then asked the young boy for his name. He replied, Abba, which means father. Rabbi Yesa continued, You shall be a father in all things, you shall be a father in wisdom and in years. And he applied to him the verse, Your father and your mother will be glad, and she that bore you shall rejoice. Mishlei 2325 246. Rabbi Shishkiah said that the Holy One blessed be he shall remove the spirit of uncleanliness from the world as it is written, and the spirit of uncleanliness I will cause to pass out of the land. Zechariah 132 and also he will swallow up death forever and Hashem Elohim will wipe off the tears from all faces and remove the disgrace of his people from all the earth for Hashem spoke Yeshayah 258, 247 and the Holy One blessed be he shall restore the moon to its full brightness and remove it from the darkness into which the evil serpent caused it to fall as it is written and the light of the moon shall be as the light of the sun and the light of the sun shall be sevenfold as the light of the seven days. Yeshayah 3026 so he asked what is the light of the seven days and he answered it is the light that the Holy One blessed be he hid away in the seven days of creation section 32 and Elohim blessed Noach the Zohar offers us the opportunity to draw in and manifest all the blessings that are generated though this passage 248 and Elohim blessed Noach and his sons and said to them be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth Rabbi Abba started it. Discussion by saying the blessing of Hashem it makes rich and no pain shall be added there to Mishlei 1022 so the blessing of Hashem is the Sheshanah who is in charge of the blessings of the world and from whom come all blessings 249 come and behold what is written before the verse that reads Elohim bless Noach it is written and Hashem said to Noach come you and all your house in the ark when they entered the ark they were addressed by Yudi Hei Bape who is Zeir Anpin but when they left the ark they were addressed by Elohim who is the female principle of Zeir Anpin as has already been stated the landlord who is Zeir Anpin gave Noach permission to enter afterward the lady of the house who is the female principle of Zeir Anpin allowed him to leave so he entered with the permission of the husband Zeir Anpin and left by permission from the wife who is the female principle of Zeir Anpin from this we learn that the landlord should welcome the visitor into the house and it Wife should escort him out as it is written and Elohim spoke to Noach saying go forth out of the ark. Bear sheet 815 to 16 permission to leave is granted by the wife permission to enter is not 250 because he left the ark he presented her with gifts namely the offering of a sacrifice for she is in the house and it was in her hands in other words the mokin of the house are in the hands of the female principal alone he offered her gifts to make her more lovable to her husband from this we can learn how a guest should behave he should present the lady of the house with departing gifts after he gives her the presents her husband will become fonder of her and she will bless him as it is written and Elohim blessed Noach and his sons and said to them be fruitful and multiply and also the blessing of Hashem it makes rich Mishlei 1022 which definitely indicates that the Sheshanah who is responsible for the blessings of the world is Hashem's blessing 251 and he adds no sorrow with Herib, this is the secret of the verse. In sorrow shall you eat of it. Bereshit 317. The word sorrow indicates sadness and anger. It means without a bright face when the moon grows darker, the blessings disappear. In sorrow refers to the spirit of the other side or the clipot which prevent blessings from reaching our world by causing people to sin. The words and he adds no sorrow with her. Hint at the secret of the verse. I will not again curse the earth anymore. Bereshit 821. For sorrow means that the other side is in power bringing curses upon the world. Therefore, when he does not add any sorrow with her, he also does not again curse because both are one and the same. Section 33. And the fear of you and the dread of you. Man has two bodies one composed of light, salam, the more image of God, and the other composed of physical matter. The light body is our protective shield that shines and projects outward from our physical selves. It Zohar explains that even deadly animals fear us when this force radiates at maximum power negative actions gradually weaken and dim this protective light this arouses fears within us which in turn create vulnerabilities to destructive external forces the secret is concealed in the Torah story of God blessing Noah and his children so that all the animals shall fear them knowing the secret rekindles the light aspect of our body 252 and the fear of you and the dread of you shall be. Bereshit 92 means that from now on you shall take the form of human beings from which the beast of the earth fear from the time of Adam sin until this point they did not take the form of human beings now come and behold in the beginning it is written the beast of the earth were afraid of man for in the image of Elohim made he man Bereshit 96 and also in the likeness of Elohim made he him Bereshit 51 but as people sin they no longer maintain the supernal image and they became Afraid of the beast of the field 253 Formerly the creatures of the world looked upon man and saw the holy supernal image and trembled with fear but as people sin their image was transformed in the eyes of the beast this is why human beings now tremble with fear of other creatures 254 Come and behold all the people who do not sin before their master and do not transgress against the precepts of the Torah retain the divine splendor of the image of Elohim therefore all the creatures of the world tremble with fear of them but when the people transgress against the precepts of
On the verse of David Maskell, happy is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Tehillim 321. He said that although this passage has been explained, it contains deep secrets of wisdom. We have learned that King David praised the Holy One. Blessed be he with ten levels of praises which are conducting playing melody. Maskell epigrams, mic psalm, song, blessing, prayer, thanksgiving, and hallelujah. Through these praises, King David perfected the book of Tehillim. Maskell is a level that refers to the secret of Chakma and David perfected himself before attaining this level 257. Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven. This means that when the Holy One, blessed be he weighs the sins and the merits of men, transgression is forgiven. When the merits overcome the sins and draw them downward on the scale, this means that he has more merits than sins. When this happens, his transgression is forgiven. 258. The verse whose sin is covered means that when judgment prevails. In the world sin should be covered so that the angel of destruction does not take control of it. This is what happened with Nosh during the flood when the Holy One blessed be he shielded him from Adam's sin of the tree of knowledge of good and evil that Adam brought down upon the world because the angel of destruction did not see Nosh he was unable to cling to him and punish him but because Adam brought sin upon the world we find that the other living creatures were given control of the human. Being is afraid of them and the world has not reached perfection so when Nosh left the ark the Holy One blessed be he blessed him as it is written and Elohim blessed Nosh and his sons and also the fear of you and the dread of you shall be upon every beast of the field which means that his form became like that of Adam before the sin of the tree of knowledge when all the living creatures feared him 259 and you be fruitful and multiply bear sheet 97 he raised the issue that females. Do not seem to be included in these blessings as the verse mentions only Noach and his sons but not the females. Rabbi Shimon said that the term and you with an added Bob which means and indicates that the males and the females were both included. The letter Bob that appears here indicates the female principle not only that but in the verse and Elohim blessed Noach the word ET is added to suggest the name of the female principle and it is also mentioned here to include Noach's wife and in the line and ET his sons the particle ET is used to indicate that their wives are included 260 because it is written be fruitful and multiply propagate your kind we know that females were also blessed and from here onward brings abundantly in the earth in which the Holy One blessed be he handed over to them to all of them who followed after seven precepts of the Torah when Israel stood on Mount Sinai they were all given the precepts of the Torah together. Section 34 I have set my rainbow in the cloud. The Zohar explains that the rainbow is a sign indicating that a great destruction was forthcoming, but it has been prevented by the hand of God. Reading the section infuses us with the same light of protection expressed by the sign of the rainbow 261. And Elohim said to Noach, This is the sign of the covenant which I make between me and you. I have set my rainbow in the cloud. Bereshit 98 12 to 13. The words I have set show that he had already set the rainbow. Rabbi Shimon commented on the verse, and above the firmament that was over their heads was the likeness of a throne with the appearance of a sapphire stone. Yeshiskel 126. Before this it is written, and when they went out, I heard the noise, voice of their wings like the noise of great waters as the voice of Shaita. Yeshiskel 124. These words refer to the four sacred and mighty supreme animals upon whom the firmament rests. Their wings are joined together to cover their Bodies 262 when they spread their wings the singing voice of all their wings is heard and the words as the voice of Shaday indicate that this voice is never silent as it is also written praise to you and never be silent. Tehillim 3013 he then asked what do they say and he answered they say Hashem has made known his salvation his righteousness he has openly showed in the sight of the heathens. Tehillim 982 263 the words the noise of commotion as the noise of a host Yashiskel 124. Signify the noise of the holy camp with its supernal armies assembled on high he asked and what do they say and he answered they say holy 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 is Hashem of hosts the whole earth is full of his glory. Yeshaya 63 they face south and say holy then they face north and say holy then they face east and say holy and then they face west and say bless 264 and that firmament rests on top of their head so wherever the animal moves it turns its head and faces all four faces. Gathered within it also turns its head and faces all four corners of the world, all four directions of the winds, and they are all brought back and spread downward. 265. The four faces of these animals are imprinted on all four sides of the firmament, which are the four winds of heaven, south, north, east, and west. The face of a lion is imprinted to the south, the face of a bull to the north, the face of an eagle to the east, and the face of a man to the west. All of the faces are also imprinted. With the face of man, the face of lion is imprinted with the face of man, the face of eagle, with the face of man, and the face of bull, with the face of man. All faces are included in the face of man, and this is why it is written as for the likeness of their faces. They each had the likeness of man. Yashiskel 110. This means that all four have the face of man. 266. Now the firmament is a square that points in four directions and contains all of the colors, four of which white, red, green, and black are. Seen each of these colors I as imprinted with all four colors so we have 16 colors altogether the upper ones the animal of Chesed, Bura and Tiferet are engraved the same applies to the lower ones the animal of Netzach, Hadyazet and Malchut so when these four colors the colors of the animals of Netzach, Hadyazet and Malchut spread out they become 12 and not 16 like the animal of Chesed, Bura and Tiferet the colors are green, red, white and sapphire which is a combination of the first. Three in other words the color sapphire which is Malchut is not really a color by itself but a combination of the three other colors so we have three colors multiplied by four which adds up to 12 this is why it is written as the appearance of the rainbow that is in the cloud in the day of rain so was the appearance of the brightness round about this was the appearance of the likeness of the glory of Hashem Yashiskel 128 this appearance and likeness Malchut contains all three colors meaning. That Malchut has no color of its own but contains the other three colors that is why it is written the appearance of the rainbow in the cloud 267 he asked what is meant by my rainbow and he replied it is similar to what has been said about Yosef but his bow rainbow abode from Bereshit 4324 the rainbow suggests Malchut and since Yosef is called righteous which is the attribute of Yezid his rainbow refers to the covenant of the rainbow Yezid of Malchut the covenant is Yezid and the rainbow Malchut the rainbow is considered righteous because the covenant Yezid united with it and because Noach was righteous his covenant was established and included in the secret of the rainbow 268 were made strong Bereshit 4924 he asked what is the meaning of Beifazilah to make strong and he replied that his hands were shining from the light that is as pure gold paws and desired by all this relates to the verse more to be desired are they than gold than much fine gold paws. And sweet Tehillim 1911 this means that his hands shone with the supernal light because he observed the covenant this is why when he merited the covenant he was called Yosef the righteous the rainbow was also called the covenant because he and the rainbow are combined and included within each other as previously explained 269 and the rainbow is the splendor of the glory on high the sight beyond all sights Malchut called the glory on high contains all the sights it is also the sight of the hidden lights which are the hidden and unrevealed colors the three colors white red and green which are Chesed, Bura and Tiferet these lights are covered and hidden above the chest and they are revealed in the rainbow the eye is not permitted to look at the rainbow when it appears in the world for the rainbow exposes fault in the Shechina furthermore the colors of the rainbow are connected with the appearance of the mist and the cloud which mean that they are covered up like the Appearance of the glory on high it should not be gazed upon that the colors of the rainbow are connected to the side of the mist and the cloud indicates that they are covered like the side of the supernal glory which must not be seen 270 but because the earth looks at the rainbow Malchut called the earth is completed by the rainbow and then the sacred covenant is properly established therefore it shall be for a sign of a covenant between Elohim Bereshit 913 what we previously stated. That these are three colors white red and green and one other color that is comprised of the other three all form one secret this means that the rainbow is formed by these three colors and a fourth that is a combination of them and the rainbow climbs to the clouds to show itself because it can only be seen from within a cloud 271 and above the firmament that was over their heads was the likeness of a throne as the appearance of a sapphire stone Yashiskel 126 the sapphire stone is a Foundation stone which is one point upon which the whole world stands upon it the holy
Study the reason given by the Zohar concerns the supernal forces and the souls of the righteous who traverse many worlds to join us whenever we learn true spiritual study does not pertain to the acquisition of external knowledge learning and studying the secrets of the Torah is the sum and substance of light itself specifically study and light are one and the same therefore when we study we are in reality bringing the spiritual forces of light into full manifestation this understanding helps us prepare our entire being so that we may become worthy vessels for the light of the Creator to fill 273 Rabbi Yehuda woke up one night to study Torah it was midnight in a guest house in the town of Monomah there was a Jew staying there who had arrived with two sacks of clothes to sell Rabbi Yehuda opened the discussion saying and this stone which I have set for a pillar shall be the house of Elohim Bershi 2822 that stone he continued is the foundation stone on which the world was Planted and on that stone the holy temple was built 274 the Jew raised his head up and said how can this be possible as the foundation stone existed before the world was created and from it the world was planted you claim that this stone which I have set for a pillar means that until Yaakov set it as a pillar it was not properly set and did not stand in its place as it is written and he took the stone he had put under his head Bershi 2211 but the foundation stone was established and stood in its place before the creation of the world and furthermore Yaakov was in Bethel while the foundation stone was in Jerusalem where IT stands in the place of the holy temple 275 Rabbi Yehuda without turning his face toward him quoted the verse prepare to meet your Elohim O Yisrael Amos 412 he continued as it is written take heed and your O Yisrael Devarim 273 this means that the words of Torah require full attention and that it should be approached with the body and soul. Properly focused the Jew rose dressed sat by Rabbi Yehuda's side and said happy are you righteous who study the Torah day and night 276 Rabbi Yehuda said to him now that you have properly prepared yourself we shall join one another and you can say what you want to say for before discussing Torah a person has to properly prepare his body and heart if this were not so I would lay in bed and think of these things in my heart but we have learned that even one person sitting and studying Torah is accompanied by the Sheshanah and if the Sheshanah is already here how can I lay in bed also in order to delve into Torah a person requires a clear mind and he who lies in his bed does not have a clear mind 277 furthermore when a person gets up to study Torah in the middle of the night when the northern wind awakes the holy one blessed be he enters Gan Eden and enjoys himself with the righteous and he together with the righteous in the garden listen to the words that come from such a person's mouth so if the holy one blessed be he and the righteous delight in hearing the words of Torah at this hour how can I lay in my bed now Rabbi Yehuda said to the Jew say what you have to say 278 he told Rabbi Yehuda that he had a question about the statement regarding the verse and this stone which I have set for a pillar shall be the house of Elohim you said it refers to the foundation stone how can that be the foundation stone existed even before the creation of the world from this stone the world was planted and you say that which I have set means that Yaakov has just said it and it is written and he took the stone that he had put under his head 279 also Yaakov was in Bethel while the stone was in Jerusalem Rabbi Yehuda answered that Yaakov folded up the land of Israel and placed it under his head even though he was in Bethel the Jew continued it is written he took the stone that he had put and also and the stone which I have set for a pillar Meaning that Yahya established it now so how can it be the same stone which had existed before the world was created Rabbi Yehuda said if you know anything say it 280 the Jew then began it is written as for me I shall behold your face in righteousness I shall be satisfied when I wake up and see your likeness Tehillim 1715 King David felt great affection for and devotion to the stone the stone is Malchut and it is called the foundation stone and also righteousness therefore David said of it the stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone Tehillim 11822 and when he wanted to look at the reflection of his master's glory he would simply take the stone into his hands and enter 281 whoever wants to appear before his master can enter only by that stone as it is written thus had with Malchut that is called this had Zot shall Iharon come into the holy place Vayikra 163 King David was glorifying himself saying as for me I shall behold your face in Righteousness which is Malchut his main intention was to show himself and appear with the stone turned heaven where 282 come and behold Avraham instituted the morning prayer which corresponds to the sphere of Shesed of Zeir and in so doing he made known the essence of his master in the world and he fixed the time of the morning as it should properly be as it is written and Avraham rose up early in the morning Bershi 223 this means that he fixed the attribute of Shesed that prevails in the morning it's Hach instituted the afternoon prayer which corresponds to the sphere of Bura of Zeir and and made the world know that there is judgment and a judge who can save the world and judge it this means that he fixed the attribute of Bura 283 Yaakov instituted the evening prayer which corresponds to Malchut of the female principle of Zeir and through this prayer he established what no man had before and he therefore praised himself saying and the stone which is Malchut I had put for a pillar he fixed her properly because until that time nobody had established it as he had 284 this is why he took the stone that he had put under his head and set it up for a pillar Bershi 2818 but what is the meaning of a pillar it means that Malchut had fallen and he set her up and he poured oil on the top of it Bershi 2818 means that her positioning depended on Yaakov more than on any other person in the world for Yaakov is her husband the chariot of Tiferet therefore all amendments made to Malchut who is his female principal are dependent on him 285 Rabbi Yehuda then came kissed the Jew and said to him you know all this and still you deal in commerce and neglect eternal life the Jew answered times are pressing and I have two sons studying daily in a house of Torah I have to care for their expenses and pay their teachers fees so that they can continue to study 286 he continued quoting the verse and Solomon sat upon the throne of David his father and his kingdom was established firmly I may lodge him 212 and he asked what is the reason for Solomon's praise he replied that he established the foundation stone and set over it the holy of holies thereby firmly establishing his kingdom 287 it is written and I will look upon it that I may remember the everlasting covenant Bereshit 916 meaning that the holy one blessed be he always desires her Malchut whoever is not seen with her does not enter before his master that is why it is written and I will look upon it that I may remember the everlasting covenant because the seeing is only for her 288 he asks what is meant by and I will look upon it and he answered that it is a secret relating to the words and set a mark upon the foreheads Yeshiskel 94 this mark is the letter top that shall be seen on their foreheads but there are those who say that the seeing is related to the impression of his holy sign in the flesh the circumcision. 289 Rabbi Yehuda said certainly both the aspect of the letter Toph and the diadem are implied in the expression look upon it nevertheless the rainbow that is seen in the world is based on a supernal secret and when the nation of Israel goes forth from exile this rainbow will be adorned with color like a bride who adorns herself for her husband 290 the Jew then told him this is what my father said to me while he was departing from this world do not expect the coming of Mashiach until this rainbow is seen in the world adorning itself in shining colors and shining to all the world only then expect Mashiach 291 from where do we know this from the verse that says and I will look upon it that I may remember the everlasting covenant because now during the exile when the rainbow is seen with darkened colors it is a reminder to prevent the flood from returning to the world but when Mashiach appears it shall shine brightly and be ornamented like a bride who adorns herself for her Husband and what is predicted in the verse to remember the everlasting covenant shall come to pass then the Holy One blessed be he will remember that covenant and raise her from the dust as it is written and they will seek Hashem their Elohim and David their king Hashia 35 David their king refers to Malchut that is the secret of the rainbow it is also written but they shall serve Hashem their Elohim and David their king whom I will raise for them Yermeah 309 meaning whom I will raise from the dust as you say I will raise up the tabernacle of David that is fallen Amos 911 it is therefore said at that time I will look upon it that I may remember the everlasting covenant and raise her from the dust 292 my father said that the reason the redemption of Israel and the remembrance of Malchut are mentioned in the Torah is that remember the everlasting covenant refers to the redemption of Israel and the completion of Malchut that is why in reference to the time
Notes that went forth from the ark. Bear sheet 918. Rabbi Lazar said it is written the sons of notes that went forth from the ark. Could it be that there were others who did not emerge from the ark? 294. Rabbi Abba answered yes, his sons bore other children afterward. As it is written, these are the generations of Shem. Bear sheet 1110. They did not go forth from the ark, and it is therefore written that went forth from the ark were Shem, Sham, and Yafit. 295. Rabbi Shimon said, Had I been alive when the Holy One blessed be, he gave humankind the books of Shadok and Adam, I would have tried my best to prevent them from circulating among the people, for at that time wise men were not afraid to look into them and pervert their meaning. They twisted the books' ideas and took them from the supernal dominion of the holiness to another dominion which is not holy now. However, the wise of the world know things but conceal them, that is, they do not reveal the secrets and they strengthen themselves in serving their master that is why now it is allowed to delve into the secrets of the Torah 296 I found this passage about the sons of Nosh who went forth from the ark hidden among the secrets of the secrets when the hidden and unknown bliss that is above all bliss which is Bina when she ascended to the head of Eric Enpin is aroused the cause of all causes which is Eric Enpin produces from within himself a thin light Bina for lack of Shesedim can receive only a thin light from Eric Enpin this is why Bina is hidden and inconceivable therefore Bina is aroused and receives within herself the illuminations of the three columns this means that using the supernal anointing oil the illumination of Shesedim which is the secret of Kolam the bliss above all bliss shines its light on the right column and it shines its light on the left column with the gaiety of good wine that is illuminations of Chakma which is the secret of Shurak and it shines its light on the Central column with the gaiety of both the right and the left columns, which is the secret of Chirik for the spirit which is Zeir Enpin has been aroused and has joined the central column of Bina from which emanates the Nekud at Hakirik lit the vowel of Chirik while the spirit of the left column has ascended and been placed in the spirit of the right column. Then all three columns of Bina are joined together and included in each other. 297 they cling to each other. Zeir Enpin clings to Bina and then all three enter into the other three. The three columns of Bina enter and become the three columns of Zeir Enpin. From the three columns of Zeir Enpin one goes forth. This one is the covenant is it and the female principle is attached to the covenant. Afterward the rising spirit which is the spirit of the left column leaves him and the female principle is impregnated by him. This means that the left column leaves Zeir Enpin and is passed on to the female principle afterward when it Female principle receives the two columns of Zeir Enpin when she receives the Shesedim of the right and she and Zer Enpin are attached spirit to spirit. The female principle becomes pregnant with three sons and from Nosh and the Ark three sons emerged. These sons who emerged from the Ark Shem Sham and Yafit were similar to the supernal three columns. Shem was the right one, Sham the left one, and Yafit the central one whose color is purple and which includes the other two. 298 and Sham is the father of Nangershi. 318 Nod is the filth under the refuse of the gold, namely that which settles at the bottom of the pot during the melting of the gold, and he is also the arousal of the ancient serpent spirit of impurity. Sham is the left column which is the secret of gold, and Nod who represents the ancient serpent is his refuse. This is why the verse specifically reads, and Sham is the father of Nod, the same Nod who brought curses on the world, the same Nod who was himself. Cursed and who darkened the faces of the creatures. In other words, he is the serpent who seduced Chava and brought curses on the world and who was cursed himself and darkened the faces of the creatures by bringing death upon them. 299 Only Cham was separated from the rest because as is written and Cham is the father of Nan. This refers to the one who brought darkness upon the world. The serpent nobody else is described in this fashion. It does not say Cham is the father of so and so or Yafit is the father of so and so. The scriptures say immediately and Cham is the father of Nan. 300 Hence what does it say about Abraham? It says and Abram passed through the land and the Nanite was then in the land. Bear sheet 126 The patriarchies the Mokin that were drawn down for the female principle called the land were not yet established and the seed of Israel had not yet appeared in the world. The name of Nan therefore could not yet be removed from the land and replaced. With the sacred supernal name of Israel, but when Israel was righteous and drew down the three columns of Zeir and called Israel to mate with the female principle, the land came to be called by the name land of Israel. It was named for the lower Israel who completed the female principle and her husband Zeir and but when they were not worthy and the female principle was left with the left column with the gold's refuse called not, it was called by a different name, the land of Nan. 301 Therefore it is written, and he said, Curse be not a slave of slaves, he shall be to his brothers. Bear sheet 925 For he brought curses upon the world, and he represents the ancient serpent, and what is said of the serpent, Curse are you of all cattle. Bear sheet 314 He was cursed as well in the passage, Curse be not a slave of slaves, shall he be to his brothers, because cattle are slaves to human beings, and because he is worse than the cattle, and the most cursed he is the slave of slaves. This is why it is written that Shem Sham and Yafit are the three sons of Nosh who emerged from the ark as has previously been explained they are the secret of the three columns the female principle that is called the ark received them from Zeir and became pregnant by them and brought them forth into the world section 37 these three sons of Nosh three unique energy forces permeate all existence the Zohar explains that the supernal secret is denoted by the three sons of Noah these three spiritual forces are known as right column left column and central column that is the positive desire to share the negative desire to receive and the free will to balance these desires into receiving for the sake of sharing in our physical world they also manifest as the proton electron and neutron the Zohar further reveals that Noah's three sons are the source of all the souls who have come to this world 302 these three are the sons of Nosh Bereshit 919 They are the existence of the entire world. The word existence indicates the Mokin of the female principle, which is called the world. They are the existence of the supernal secret. The Mokin of Bina, the words and of them was the whole earth overspread, means that all human souls are descended from them. They are the secret of the three supernal colors of Bina, which are the three columns when the river that comes out from Eden and which is Zeir and watered the garden, which is the female principle. It watered it by the power of the three supernal columns, by the power of the supernal Bina, then the lower colors, white, red, and black, which are the secret of the lower three columns of the female principle, expanded. Each of these colors is included in the other to show that the glory of the Holy One, blessed be he, extends up to Bina and down to Malchut and is one above and below. 303 Rabbi Laser said that these three colors exist in all of the Mokin that originate from it. Holy side their appearance which is Malchut includes all three colors which expand into the colors coming from the other spirit and when you look into the secret of the levels you will find that the colors spread out in all directions right left and center until they enter below into Malchut this is the secret of the 27 channels of doors that cover the deep 304 all this is known to our exalted sages worthy are the righteous with their lot that the Holy One blessed be he wants to glorify the men reveal to them the supernal secrets of wisdom of them it is written the secret of Hashem is to those who fear him and to let them know his covenant Tehillim 2514 305 Rabbi Lazar said Hashem you are my Elohim I will exalt you I will praise your name for you have done wonderful things even counsels of old in faithfulness and truth Yeshayah 251 how important it is for people to pay attention to the honor of the Holy One blessed be he and praise him for the desires of he who knows how to praise his master as he deserves will be fulfilled not only that but he also causes an increase of blessings above and below 306 so whoever is able to praise his master and proclaim his unity is held in affection on high and is beloved below and the holy one blessed be he is proud of him such a person is described by the verse and he said to me my servant Israel in whom I will be glorified Yeshua 433 section 38 and Noach man of it earth began and planted a vineyard the Zohar explains that both Noah and Adam sinned under the influence of wine Kabbalah teaches that wine is a powerful tool for drawing in light as a grape is a potent conduit of spiritual energy wine is therefore used as a tool in blessings to reveal God's light into our physical world when through the absence of a blessing we do not prepare a large enough vessel or if we consume wine for reasons not related to spirituality the torrent of light aroused Becomes uncontrollable. This is a mystery that explains wine's ability to induce intoxicated behavior. 
This is why the verse says and was uncovered meaning that he uncovered a gap in the world which had been covered until that time within his tent Halo is spelled with the final hey it is not spelled Halo with a vav therefore it is written and do not come near the door of her house Mishle 5 9 is tent dash indicating a vineyard and not his own tent for this reason it is written with a hey and not with a vav 309 the same thing happened with the sons of Aaron who as we have learned were drunk and he asked who gave them wine to drink in such a place could you ever think that they were so impertinent as to get drunk no this cannot be so but indeed they did drink from that certain type of wine and became drunk as is it is written and they offered strange fire before Hashem Vayikra 101 it says here a strange fire Havesh and elsewhere that they may keep you from a strange woman Havisha Mishle 85 and both verses apply to the same thing everything amounts to the same explanation 310 we find the same meaning in the words and he drank of the wine and was drunk and he was uncovered Beersheet 921 this aroused Cham the father of Nun because of whom the point of judgment which is the secret of nakedness of his father became uncovered and we have learned that Nun was given a place to rule and he castrated notes thereby removing the secret of the covenant which had made him a righteous man as we have learned that he removed the covenant the male organ from him meaning that he removed the mokin of begetting which is given only by the power of the holy covenant this removal is considered castration 311 this is why Noach said curse be Nun because curses were initially brought upon the world by him for he is the secret of the serpent as it is written a slave of slaves he shall be and also cursed are you of all cattle Beersheet 314 everything shall be corrected in the future except for not all the slaves except none shall be freed from their slavery and this is the secret known to those who are familiar with the ways and the paths of the Torah section 39 Bathsheba and Uriah through a story pertaining to King David and Bathsheba the Zohar reveals that a person's negative action brings about the creation of an actual negative entity these negative influences are not presented as metaphors they are actual forces that directly affect the activities of mankind individually and collectively they are as real as an unseen atom and as influential in our lives as the invisible force of gravity the Kabbalists reject entirely the concept of a creator who administers punishments and rewards by way of illustration electrical energy benefits our society in countless ways if a person inadvertently placed his finger in a light socket and was electrocuted it would be senseless to suggest that the electricity punished the individual the Zohar is offering us a Lesson on accountability this along with repentance is the only way we can eradicate all negative forces 312 he opened the discussion by quoting for I know my transgressions and my sin is ever before me always tell him 515 people should be staunchly on guard against sinning before the holy one blessed be he because after a person has sinned his sin is recorded in the upper world and may only be blotted out through the power of great repentance this is as it is written for though you wash yourself with nitre and take yourself much soap yet your iniquity has become a stain before me year may 222 313 come and behold the first time a person sins before the holy one blessed be he leaves a stain if he sins a second time the stain is darkened if he sins a third time the stain spreads to all sides this is suggested by the words your iniquity has become a stain before me year may 222 314 come and behold when king david sinned with Bathsheba before the holy one blessed be he King David thought that the stain of the sin would last forever but what is written Hashem also has put away your sin you shall not die to Samuel 1213 meaning that the stain was blotted out 315 Rabbi Abba then asked him if Bathsheba belonged to King David from the day the world was created why did the Holy One bless be he give her first to Uri Abba 316 Rabbi Shimon told him that these are the ways of the Holy One bless be he although a woman may be destined to become a certain man's wife another man may marry her first but as soon as the time has come for the destined man to marry her the latter is removed from this world because of the other that comes after him and it is very hard and painful for the Holy One bless be he to remove that person from the world before his time has come 317 the secret of why Bathsheba was given first to Uri Abba lies in the answer to the question of why the Holy Land was given first to none before the Nation of Israel existed from this you shall understand why Bathsheba was given first to Uriah both questions are connected to one secret and one matter 318 come and behold even though David confessed his sins and repented he was not able to completely forget and extirpate them from his heart especially the sin related to Bathsheba because he always feared that one of his sins might reappear and persecute him in time of danger he never forgot them or blotted them out of his memory he said for I know my transgression and my sin is before me always 319 another interpretation of the verse for I know my transgression is I am familiar with all the levels connected to the sins of humankind in other words he had already corrected them on the other hand my sin is before me always refers to the defect of the moon which he did not correct the moon's defect was not corrected until Solomon appeared at that point it shone flawless and full and the world was joyful lit. Perfumed and Yisrael dwelt in security as it is written and Yehuda and Yisrael dwelt safely every man under his vine and under his fig tree I may lash him 55 my sin is before me always signifies that even in the days of King Solomon the moon's defect was not completely corrected for the holy temple was destroyed twice and the moon which is the female principle returned to its uncorrected state this defect shall not be removed from the world until the king Mashiach appears as is described in the verse and the spirit of uncleanliness I will cause to pass out from the earth Zechariah 132 section 40 he was a mighty hunter according to the Zohar Nimrod used the clothes of Adam to gain strength clothes is a code word that alludes to the physicality that conceals the light as garments conceal the body Nimrod we are told connected only to the material world without any regard or consideration for the spiritual essence of reality this is Considered to be a form of idol worshipping it is falling under the delusion and control of the physical world a deeper awareness for the spiritual essence of life is awakened within us by these passages so that we are not controlled by illusion 320 he was a mighty hunter before Hashem therefore it is said even as Nimrod the mighty hunter before Hashem Beersheet 109 come and behold Nimrod was a brave man who wore the garments of Adam and knew how to hunt all living beings surrendered to him because of those garments those coats of skin as the verse reads to Adam also and to his wife did Hashem Elohim make coats of skin and clothe them Beersheet 321 321 Rabbi Lazar said that Nimrod used to entice people into idol worshipping he used the power of those garments to rule all other human beings he proclaimed himself Elohim the ruler of the world so all other human beings had to serve him but why was he called Nimrod because he rebelled Hadmarad against the hiking of above against the power of the supernal holy one and also against the lower forces of human beings of this world 322 by the power of these garments he was able to rule over all mankind he rebelled against them and his master by saying that he was the ruler of the world that is he declared himself Elohim he seduced people into following him leaving the service of the almighty and serving him instead Rabbi Shimon said that our friends knew a great secret about these garments section 41 and the house in its being built if we make a complete connection to the light of God we need only begin a new endeavor and the light finishes the work on our behalf this unusual concept is further understood through the example of planting a seed once the seed is planted the forces of nature take over eventually giving birth to a full-grown tree when our connections to the light are secure and complete we can plant seeds of positive energy in all areas of our lives we Gain this ability through the metaphysical powers that are emitted through the medium of the letters 323 and the whole earth was of one language and of one speech. Beersheet 111 Rabbi Shimon began by quoting and the house in its being built was built of stone made ready before it was brought there so that there was neither hammer nor axe nor any tool of iron heard in the house in its being built. I may 67 he asked if the words and the house in its being built mean that the house built itself could it be that Solomon and all his artisans did not build it why does it read in its being built 324 we read and you shall make a candelabra in one piece of pure gold shall the candelabra be made. Shema 2531 now a candelabra is to be made of beaten work meaning if the artisans are to beat the bar of metal with a sledgehammer why does the verse continue shall the candelabra be made that is to say shall it be made by itself but of course in the holy temple everything happened and all objects made themselves by miracles and signs as soon as the artisans began to work the art crafted itself showing them how to work in ways they had not known before they started 325 why was that so because the blessings of the holy one blessed be he were upon their hands
came to dwell upon them and accomplish the work. Another interpretation is that the stone made the hands travel or work involuntarily, for here it is written Masa just as it appears in the verse, and for the journeying Masa of the camps, Bimit bar 102, because the word in the latter verse refers to an action, we may conclude that in the first one it also describes an action. 327 There was neither hammer nor axe nor any tool of iron heard in the house because a certain worm called Shamir lit. Emery split everything noiselessly and thus they did not require other tools. Everything occurred by a miracle. 328 How pleasant it is to hear the words of the Torah, how good is a lot of he who delves in them and knows how to walk the path of truth, said Rabbi Shimon. So the house in its being built means that the desire of the Holy One, blessed be he to be glorified, arose from within the thought and spread forth in other words. Bino, which is called desire, came from the head of Eric. Enpin, which is called the thought and spread forth from the place that is called the concealed thought that is it spread forth from the concealed chakma of Eric Enpin, which is a mystery because the chakma of Eric Enpin is concealed and unrevealed to the levels of Atzalut until everything is corrected. This bina that came from the head of Eric Enpin is used for the purpose of bringing forth chakma and not the concealed chakma of Eric Enpin. 329 Bina spread forth until it lush inside the throat of Eric Enpin from where it constantly flows by the secret of the spirit of life. Afterward, when the thought chakma of Eric Enpin had expanded and settled in that place, bina returned and received the upper three sfirah from chakma of Eric Enpin and once again became the representation of thought. Thus, the thought is called the living Elohim, as is written, He is the living Elohim. Yermaya 1010 330 The emanator wanted to continue expanding and revealing. Himself, so he caused the secret of the three columns, fire, wind, and water to come forth. Thus, Yahakov, the perfect man who is Zeir and came forth, and his was the one voice that came through and was heard from this. We learned that the thought that was secretly hidden by him was revealed and made audible by Yahakov, who is Zeir and 331. This thought kept expanding so that it could be revealed, and this voice struck upon the lips, and speech came out, completing and revealing everything we learned. From this, that everything is the thought that was concealed internally, and therefore all are one. 332. Speech was an extension of Bina, meaning that Bina was drawn to the female principle by the power of the voice. The voice is Zeir and who receives from Bina and passes on to the female principle the words and the house in its being built refer to the fact that it built itself by signs and miracles. The verse reads in its being built and not when it was built if the phrase was meant. To indicate that the house built itself, it would have read, and the house when it was built, why does it read in its being built? And he explained that this is to teach us that it is so at all times. Ready made stone is the stone of Solomon. It is also written with the diadem with which his mother crowned him. Sure, Hashirim 311, referring to Bino, which is called I am a mother. Thus, when the female principle receives these diadems, she is called the stone of Solomon. 333, it was brought. There indicates that the illumination of the Mokin as it emerged from the internal aspect of Bina, that is, all the work was completed and came from Bina, it then remained outside in Zeir and been emerging from the upper level Bina and traveling down to the female principle. The hammers and axe and all other tools of iron are the lower levels that depend on the female principle. They were neither heard nor received by the internal aspect when the female principle ascended to unite with the Enclose Abba and Ima and suck from there because they used the Shamir instead of other tools they were not heard. This is why the verse uses the phrase in its being built to indicate that it was built without any of the handiwork of the lower beings. 334 When the female principle nourishes itself from Abba and Ima, all the worlds are happy. They nourish themselves from the female principle and are filled with blessings. They are united by one secret, one unity, and there is no separation in it. Worlds after all the worlds, each and every one have taken their share from the female principle. They expand and return to the purposes for which they were created. Section 42 A city and a tower. Kabbalah differs from other spiritual teachings in that we are not called upon to separate ourselves from the physical world of chaos. Instead, we embrace chaos to eradicate our negative traits and to nurture transformation throughout history. This has been a Difficult endeavor the peoples of the past such as the Tower of Babel generation shows the easy path to spiritual light with dire consequences we must be careful not to fall into that same trap in the biblical story a group of evil people seek to build a tower that will reach heaven they intend to challenge God and seek world domination the Zohar quotes the verse from the Torah and they said come let us build us a city and a tower whose top may reach to heaven and let us make ourselves a name. The Zohar reveals that the term city and tower allude to the highest levels of the dark spiritual forces the word name refers to the names of God or the power of the Hebrew letters it is the letters that will allow the evil ones to access negative spiritual forces God then confuses their language creating 70 other tongues so that the power of the Hebrew letters can never be used for destructive purposes the section helps us to remain true to our spiritual path and stops us from falling. To the temptations of paths that always appear easier. 335 Come and behold, observe what has been written, and the whole world was of one language and one speech. Bereshit 111 What is written next? And it came to pass as they journeyed from the east. Also, your Bereshit 111 For they traveled away from the one who was before all. In other words, they drew down the illumination of the left, which the one who was before all had forbidden them to do. Therefore, the passage continues. They found a plain in the land of Shinar, from where judgment spread out in all directions. This is the beginning of Malchut's separation from the holiness. It is described by the phrase, You are this head of gold. Daniel 238 Because Elohim has made the one as well as the other. Kahilat 714 In the Klippah, there are also four aspects Chakma by Natifera and Malchut, and the Klippah of Babylon is Chakma of the Klippah. Hence, it is the head of all of the Klippah. 336 You might ask, since it has already been. Written and a river went out of Eden to water the garden, and from hence it was parted. Bereshit 210. How can we say that the plain lit partition in the land of Shinar was the beginning of the separation? And he replied, It is certain that the separation starts after or beyond Malchut of Atzalut, which is the secret of the garden. When they journeyed from the garden, they found the plain in the land of Shinar, and the separation was completed. They gathered in the garden to suck, but do not draw. The illumination of the left, and there was no separation. That is why the verse states that from the garden, it was parted. Only when they journeyed away from the garden did the separation occur, as it is written, as they journeyed from the east or from the garden, they found a plain. As previously explained, had they not left the garden, they would not have found a plain in the land of Shinar, and they would not have been separated from holiness. This is why the plain in the land of Shinar is. Considered to be the beginning of the separation 337 and the whole world was of one language and one speech because it had one basic and essential foundation mercy all peoples had faith in the Holy One and would not sin before him but what does it say it says and it came to pass as they journeyed from the east meaning that they drifted away from the first and foremost of the world and from the universal faith and they found a plane they did indeed find something something that would cause them to leave the supernal faith as shall be explained 338 come and behold what is said of Nimrod it is said and the beginning of his kingdom was Babel Babylon Bereshit 1010 for he drew power from Babel Babylon that helped him to cling on to the dominion of the other side it also reads they found a plane in the land of Shinar meaning they filled their hearts with desire derived from Shinar to leave the upper dominion and join a different power for the land of Shinar which is Babel is the head and root of severance from the Holy One, blessed be he 339, and they said, Come, let us build us a city and a tower whose top may reach to heaven, and let us make ourselves a name. Rabbi Shia quoted the verse, and the wicked are like the driven sea. Yeshaya 7520, he asked, Is there a driven sea? And he replied, Yes, indeed, because when the sea leaves the bed in which it belongs and starts to sway uncontrollably, attempting to overcome the boundaries of the sand that holds it in place and pour over the land, it is driven from its place, it is like a drunkard who cannot sit steadily in his place and sways up and down. Why is that? Because it cannot rest, and its waters cast up mire and dirt. Yeshaya 7520, from its floor up to its shore, 340. Similarly, the wicked generation of the Tower of Babel called Dorhe Logalit, the generation of separation who left the right and proper way and the first and foremost of the world and were as directionless and purposeless as. Drunken men they attached themselves to Bina of the cliff straying from the straight path and taking a crooked one. The crooked path was the plain
build ourselves until they were themselves defiled by the serpent 342 come and behold and they said come let us build ourselves a city and a tower whose top may reach to heaven the word come is an invitation the words let us build ourselves a city and a tower whose top may reach to heaven were unaccompanied by actions the utterance of the words alone caused the building of the city and tower in the upper worlds of people took bad advice following the stupidity and vanity of their hearts and going against the holy one blessed be he 343 rabbi abba then said that they followed the stupidity of their hearts but they used the chakma of the clipper to leave the upper dominion of holiness and enter the dominion of the clipper exchanging his glory blessed be he with that of a strange element there is a secret of supreme wisdom 344 let us build ourselves a city and a tower whose top may reach to heaven come and behold when they reached the plain that was the Foreign dominion, the place where the flaw of Bino of the Klippa had settled, it was revealed to them that the place was stuck among the fishes of the sea. In other words, the complete vessels of Bino were revealed to them, and it was proper for human dwelling and for the reception of Chakma. The sea refers to Chakma, and the fishes of the sea are the levels of Chakma. They said, This is the place to settle and strengthen our hearts and let the lower beings enjoy themselves and draw the light downward from the place of the Klippa. Having found the place, they immediately said, Let us build us a city and establish a city and a tower for ourselves. 345 And let us make us a name. This place of Klippa shall be Elohim for us, referring to the place of the Klippa, and not any other. The words build a city and tower indicate that they plan to draw down the light of Chakma and Bino of the Klippa, which are called a city and a tower. Why should we climb up and draw the light? From here upward when we are unable to enjoy anything that is above here we have found a vantage point from which to draw light downward and we shall make us a name and Elohim to worship here lest we be scattered abroad to the other levels and to all four corners of the world Sitre Torah, concealed Torah 346 the builders of the city and the tower spoke only the holy language Hebrew known to the serving angels that is why it is written and now nothing will be restrained from them. Beersheet 116 had they spoken a different language one unknown to the supernal angels they would not have succeeded for the actions of demons do not last for long only long enough for human beings to see and not longer 347 and of one speech indicates that to varying degrees they were familiar with the levels on high they confused no level with another it says and of one speech because the levels were as clear to them as one speech they had no problem in knowing them but they took that. Advice the advice of Chakma therefore it is written come let us build a city and a tower referring to the Chakma of the Klippa 348 all was according to the secret of wisdom they planned to strengthen the power of the other side in the world and worship it because they knew that all evil judgment descends from there to the worlds in so doing they hope to drive away the level of holiness 349 a city and a tower relates to the supernal Chakma they knew that the holy name Malchut is only strengthened on earth by a city and a tower a city is required as it says the city of David which is Sinai Melashim 81 and a tower as it says your neck is like the tower of David Sure Hashirim 44 that is the holy name which is Malchut of David is also called a city and a tower these names suggest Malchut drawing down the Chakma they also acted upon the wisdom of the other side in order to establish its dominion on earth the other side is the opposing power of Malchut. They wanted it to drive Malchut called the master of the entire world from its place 350 and let us make us a name like that of the other holy side in the upper worlds we will strengthen it so that it will stay with us and we will have a name in the land as the holy side shines from below upward we will draw the light from above down to earth lest we be scattered abroad they knew that they were about to be scattered all over the face of the earth and therefore joined together to accomplish their goal and build the city and the tower with Chakma 351 the other side includes male and female and they are the strength of the filth of harsh judgment when Adam sinned by eating of the tree of knowledge the male and female of the other side were strengthened in the world Adam and he did in fact cause the other side to be strengthened as it is written which the children of man built referring to Adam's children who brought the dominion of the other side which is the Side of evil upon the world like the holy side the other side has no power to rule in the world without a city and a tower therefore they built a city and a tower to give it dominion in this world 352 and Hashem came down to see Beersheet 115 the holy name came down to observe their deeds of building they built and how they spoke the holy language and successfully communicated and adjured with all the holy levels when the holiness came down the levels became confused the upper ones descending and the lower ones rising because the levels were no longer properly placed and because their names had been changed they could no longer command them he confused their language dividing it into 70 languages and scattered them to all four corners of the world 353 there is one governor in heaven who holds all the keys to the happenings of the world he stands waiting for those who seek him but he is only available at certain known hours and times of the day they were familiar with the secret of the wisdom and they knew all the secrets of this governor they used utterances to open and close the gates of the hidden mysteries using words they commanded the supernal governor the greatest governor and the leader of the world in building the city and the tower when their language became confused everything became impossible they were no longer able to bind this governor with oaths 354 in that plane they found ready a place for strengthening the evil side but were still unable to fortify it so the power of the other side remained latent in that plane until the armies and camps of those who built the city and the tower namely the sons of Ephraim traveled and reached it as he concludes there they came under the influence of that side and were killed 355 those who did not wish to leave under the influence of the end of the right the sons of Ephraim who left Egypt before the end of the time of exile panic they fell under the influence of the end of days on this plane the strength of which had been weakened at the time of the generation of the Tower of Babel Babylon now because of their misdoings the other side returned to power and killed them all this is why the verse says the valley which was full of bones Yeshiskel 371 356 the other side was strengthened by the idol that Nebuchadnezzar built and then it was weakened by the bones of the sons of Ephraim which Yeshiskel brought back to life therefore the idol that Nebuchadnezzar established was shattered by the image drawn from the holy side of the forefathers who were brought back to life and rose and stood on their feet 357 then all the peoples of the world realized that there is no supreme deity besides the holy one blessed be he not only that but his name was sanctified by Chananya Missal and Ezra because of whom the power of the other side was broken and all these events occurred in one day therefore it says they shall sanctify my name and sanctify the holy one of Yaakov Yashiah 2924 because these three events the resurrection of the dead that Yashiah performed the sanctification of the holy name by Shannon Yamisal and Ezra and the shattering of the idol of Nebuchadnezzar all occurred in one single day as it says in Sanhedrin 92b6 miracles occurred in that one day end of Sitrei Torah 358 and Hashem came down to see the city and the tower this was one of the ten times that the Shechina came down to earth he asked what did he see that he did not know beforehand and he answered to see means to observe with judgment as it is written may Hashem see and judge Shema 521 359 the city and the tower we should note what is written here because it does not say to see the people but rather to see the city and the tower why because when the holy one blessed be he observes in order to make his judgment he first observes the upper levels which are the roots and then the lower ones which are the branches a matter of it. City and tower reached high above to the worlds above and therefore the observance was first on high as it is written to see the city and the tower indicates the city and tower of the worlds above 360 which the children of man Adam built he asked why does it say the children of Adam and he answered that the verse implies that they are the sons of Adam who rebelled against his master and brought death upon the world that is they followed in his footsteps the words which the children of Adam man built indicate that they actually built it even though their words go let us build ourselves were mere words as soon as they uttered them they caused it to be built in the upper worlds they said oaths with their mouth and with them the city and tower were built section 43 the gate of the inner court as the spiritual energy center of the earth Israel cannot be overtaken by any negative forces though evil nations throughout history have Conquered Israel they eventually lost all their power after occupying the land when we attach ourselves to Israel's power through these words we receive the supernal light of protection 361 Rabbi Shimon started by quoting us says the Hashem Elohim the gate of the inner courtyard that faces the east shall be shut the six days of work but on the Shabbat day it shall be opened and on the day of the new moon it shall be opened Yashi
and behold this gate is not open during the six secular days because during these days the lower world where the Klippot and the external powers reside and prevail is nourished these secular days which are the other side rule over all the world except the land of Israel 364 and these secular days that rule outside of Israel have no rule over the holy land because of the closed gate but on Shabbat and the new moon the Klippot are removed from this world and do not rule it when the gate is open the world is happy and receives nourishment from it and the world is not under the influence of the other side 365 if you claim that these six days can rule alone come and behold the words that which faces the east lip before refer to the gate that faces stands before before the time when the clip took over it used to perpetually look at the world even during the six days of the week but now the gate is only open to allow for the world's nourishment from holiness on shabbat and the new moon therefore all the days namely all the six days of work cling on to the day of shabbat and are replenished by it on that day all the gates are opened and all the upper and the lower beings are pleased the six days would not be able to shine if they were not attached to the day of shabbat because they would be malnourished come and behold and hashem came down to see he came down from the holy to the secular to see what they had built to see the city and the tower which are Chakma and Bina of the clip that they had erected for the world to worship 366 Rabbi Yitzhak was sitting in front of Rabbi Shimon and asked him what did these people see that caused them to do such a foolish thing as to unite to rebel against the Holy One Blessed be Rabbi Shimon answered that we have already learned from the words and it came to pass as they journeyed from the east that they traveled from above downward from the land of Israel and went down into Babel Babylon. There they said this is the place in which to settle 367 and let us make ourselves a name and the help from below shall be connected to this place outside of the land of Israel for when judgment comes to abide in the world this place will be in opposition to it from this place the world will gain its sustenance and joy because from above from the lights that are drawn from below upward the world has scarce nourishment and not only that but we shall ascend and rise up to the heavens and declare war on him so that he shall not bring a great flood on earth as he did before section 44 and Hashem said behold they are one people the biblical story of the tower of Babel holds within its secrets concerning the power of unity after the great flood the people of the world spoke a single language which was Hebrew a group of people living in the city of Babylon were using mystical black arts in an attempt to control and dominate the world these black arts were empowered by spiritual forces transmitted by the Hebrew letters the Zohar states that even the creator could not stop these evil magicians as long as they were unified by speaking the same language the creator therefore caused a fragmenting of their language severing their lines of communication and this shattered their unity unified evil will always have the capability to defeat and conquer good if this unity exists among the righteous the only way to defeat unified evil is through total unity among the good this portion of the Zohar helps inspire us to seek unity in all our relationships we begin to recognize that the cause of any disunity is our own ego 368 and Hashem said behold they are one people and they have all one language Bereshit 116 because their unity had enabled them to succeed all the levels and all the nations below the branches of those levels were scattered and what is written so Hashem scattered them abroad from there Bereshit 116 this means that the Holy One blessed be he passed judgment and brought judgment upon the upper roots because the branches are affected by their roots 369 and if you ask then why was their language confounded the answer is because they all spoke the holy language they were able to command the supernal entities with those achieving the right intention of the heart depends on actions and words by the power of their intentions they strengthened and aided the establishment of the place 374 that reason their language was confounded and they were no longer able to strengthen their intentions using the holy language the supernal powers and entities know only the holy language and when their language was confounded their strength flagged and their power was broken the confusion of their language weakened their strength below and broke their concentration thus their power was broken above 371 come and behold the ability of the lower beings to bind by oath and words of the holy language is known and accepted by all the hosts of heaven they are strengthened by and receive extra power from it they neither understand nor accept any language other than the holy language because the language of the people was confounded they ceased to build the city their power was broken and they could do nothing more with their intentions 372 blessed be the name of the holy one blessed be he from everlasting to everlasting for wisdom and might are his daniel 220 because the holy one blessed be he brought the secrets of supernal wisdom down to earth the people became corrupt and wanted to provoke him 373 he passed the supernal wisdom onto Adam and through this wisdom Adam knew the upper entities Adam stuck to the evil inclination until the sources of knowledge left him and he returned to his master and part of this wisdom came back to him but not as it had been before and after that through the book the angel Raziel gave him he was able to achieve wisdom again. Later the people sinned by misusing this wisdom before the holy one blessed be he 374 Adam passed this wisdom to know who used it to serve the holy one blessed be he but what is written next and he drank of the wine and was drunken and he was uncovered he then passed it onto Abraham who also used it to serve the holy one blessed be he but then Yishmael who was descended from him angered the holy one blessed be he from its Hakim Ezab Yaakov married two sisters 375 he passed it. Wisdom to Moshe, whom it was said, he is trusted in all my house, even bar 1217. There was no one like Moshe who was faithful in all of the levels and whose heart was seduced by none and who stood firmly in his supernal faith. 376. He passed the supernal wisdom onto King Solomon, and what is written about Solomon, the man spoke to Itael, even to Itael, and I will be able. Mishlei 301. King Solomon said, Itael, meaning El is with me, have I, and since wisdom belongs to him, I shall succeed and be able to do what I want without fail. That is, even though the Torah says that a king should not take many wives so that his heart will not be seduced, King Solomon said, I shall marry many women, and my heart will not be seduced, for Itael is with me and has given me his wisdom. But after that, it is written, Hashem raised up an adversary, the Satan, for Solomon. I may lash him 1114, alluding to the fact that in his old age his wives did seduce his heart, and he was punished. 377. Come and behold. Because of part of the wisdom that the generation of the Tower of Babel Babylon received from their forefathers, they provoked the Holy One, blessed be he, and built the tower. They persisted until they were scattered all over the face of the earth, lost all their wisdom, and could accomplish nothing. 378. But in the future, the Holy One, blessed be he, shall arouse this wisdom in the world, and all shall serve him with it as it is written, and I will set my spirit within you and cause you, Yeshiskel. 3627. I will not cause you as I caused the first ones to corrupt the world by using it, but I will cause you to walk in my statutes, and you shall keep my ordinances and do them. 379. Rabbi Yussi and Rabbi Shia were walking together. Rabbi Yussi addressed Rabbi Shia, saying, Let us discuss Torah. So Rabbi Yussi began by quoting, For Hashem, your Elohim walks in the midst of your camp to deliver you and to give you your enemies before you, therefore your camp shall be holy that he does not see it. Unseemly thing in you and turn away from you. Devarim 2315. So he asked, Why does it say, For Hashem your Elohim walks using the word MIT Halakin, not the term Mahalakin? And he replied that this is similar to walking have MIT Halakin in the garden in the breeze of the day. Bear 38. This has been said of the tree of knowledge from which Adam ate, which is the female principle. So the word MIT Halak refers to the female principle, while Mahalak refers to the male aspect. 380. And it was he, the Muk, the principle who went in front of the sons of Israel as they walked in the desert, as it is written, and Hashem went before them by day. Shemad 1321. The phrase, and Hashem refers to him and his house of judgment, which is the female principle, and the same thing applies to he who walks in front of another person while going on his way, because the verse reads, Righteousness shall go before him and walk in the way of his steps. Tehillim 8514. Righteousness refers to the female principle and it is that which walks in front of a person when he is worthy of it, but why does he walk in front as it is written to deliver you and to give you your enemies before you? Devarim 2315 or to guard a person while he is walking on his way and save him from being overcome by the other side. 381 that is why a person should be careful, guard himself from his own sins and purify himself. So he asked what is it to purify and he replied that as it is written, therefore your camp shall be holy. Why does it say holy in the singular when it should have said holy in the plural because your camp shall be holy implies
So he asked why is the Torah so strict about this matter and he answered because he the Sheshana walks in front of you and if you say foul things then it will turn away from lip behind you that is he will no longer walk alongside you but go behind your back and Rabbi Yos I concluded that as for us we go on our way walking before him before the Sheshana we should delve into the Torah because the person who occupies himself with IT is crowned and perpetually accompanied by the Sheshana. 384 Rabbi Shiva then quoted and Hashem said behold they are one people and they have all one language come and behold what is written it says and it came to pass as they journeyed from the east also your but what is the meaning of your it refers to the first and foremost of the universe so he asks why does it say and they found when it should have said and they saw what did they find and he answered they found part of the secrets of wisdom of their forefathers the generation of it. Flood which was shaken off at Shinar lit the place of shaking off and with the wisdom that they found they strove to rebel against the Holy One blessed be he the uttered oaths to bind the upper ministers and to build the city and the tower 385 come and behold it is written that they are one people and they have all one language because they are of one heart and one desire to speak the Holy Language therefore now nothing which they have planned to do will be withheld from them nobody could prevent their acts but the Holy One blessed be he said what shall I do I shall confound the celestial entities above and their language below and then their work will be restrained 386 and if they because they were of one heart and one desire all spoke the Holy Language it is written nothing that they have planned to do will be withheld from them and they will not be subject to the supernal judgment for us and the friends who occupy themselves with the Torah and are of one heart and one desire this will be all the more true for nothing that we want to do will be withheld from us 387 rabbi you said that from this we learn that people who are quarrelsome do not survive as long as people are of one heart and one desire even though they might rebel against the holy one blessed be he the supernal judgment is powerless against them as soon as the generation of the tower differed with each other hashem scattered them abroad from there so we learn that quarrelsome people do not survive long 388 rabbi she then concluded that everything therefore depends upon the utterings of the mouth as soon as their language was confounded hashem scattered them abroad but what does it say of the future it says for then i will direct the peoples to use a pure language that they may all call upon the name of hashem to serve him with one consent Sephania 39 and also and hashem shall be king over all the earth and that day shall hashem be one and his name one Zechariah 149 blessed be hashem forever amen and amen